Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Marcus Rosa, a.k.a. Mazuma TV, back at y'all with another live, man, about to discuss what's currently going on in the boxing world, man. Shout out to the nation and the mob. We in the building, man. We on the road to 2K. We about to hit that 1900 mark in due time. So shout out to everybody that's about to be in the building. Shout out to everybody that's currently in the building. Hit the like button as soon as you come in. You see what I mean? Shout out to my boy, uh, Dorian. Dorian. Uh, Bu Bu Pierre. Please correct me if I'm saying that wrong, man. Sh show me the proper uh, pronunciation since you were part of the nation. You know what I mean? I want to make sure I come correct before I step. Shout out to everybody that's in the building, man. Hit the like button as soon as you come in. You know what I mean? We got some things that we need to discuss that's currently going on in the boxing world, man. Uh, but before I get into that, man, I just wanted to say this. Um, the channel has been doing absolutely phenomenal, man. Um, the way that my subscribers are climbing up so quickly, um, it's, it's pretty dope to see, man. You know what I mean? Because it was several days where it would probably take like three days to get one subscriber type shit, man. And it's looking like we about to hit that 1900 mark very soon, man. You know what I'm saying? Only need 29 more subscribers in order to hit that 1900 mark. You know what I mean? And we about to crack that 2K, John, man. So shout out to everybody that's in the building, man. I appreciate it very much. Shout out to Stop Motion MMA. What's up, man? Talk to me. What's going on? How y'all day is going, man? I hope it's going uh, very well, man. I had a nice, relaxing day, man. Did some shit around the house, but for the most part, man, I was just chilling. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm excited because tomorrow I'm going to have my son for the weekend. So very excited about that, man. I love having my boy with me. Ain't too many things in life better than fatherhood, bro. I'll tell you that shit right now, man. So I'm feeling pretty good, man. Shout out to Chris. Uh, Chris O.Y. I, I believe, I don't know if you want me to pronounce the O.Y. Just say O.Y. But regardless, Chris, he said you up next. It's just a matter of time. Hashtag men's mental health. That's a fact, bro. Shout out to Chris. You know, he always putting that, that hashtag out there, man. I feel like men's mental health is something that's very overlooked. Not really discussed about a lot. Because, you know, unfortunately in the society that we have, you know, come up in nowadays, it's like you're ashamed for, you know, expressing, you know, what's on your mind and, you know, express any type of emotions overall. You know, men get uh, pretty much uh, crucified for it, you know what I mean, for saying how we feel and stuff like that. And, you know, nowadays it's like the only way to really treat your, your, your the only way to get over your, you know, your, your mental health issues is to go get some money. You know what I mean? That's a, you know, if you you ever hear people that be like, oh man, man, uh, you know, fuck your feelings, man, get this money. It's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, you got to take care of your mental before you get into anything else that's going on in the world. You know what I mean? If your mental ain't right, everything else gonna fall apart as well. So, um, I'm definitely with you, man. Definitely a men's mental health advocate for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, if anybody, you know what I mean? We got ten people in the building. Before I get into the boxing talk, man, this is very important. This is bigger than boxing. If y'all having any type of issues in y'all head, man, if y'all feeling any type of way, man, um, if you think about hurting yourself or whatever the situation is, I know this is a little personal or whatever, man, feel free to talk to somebody, man. You know what I mean? You're going to have to open up to somebody. That's the only way you're going to be able to get through um, these issues. If you keep them bottled up, man, it's going to get to a point where, you know what I mean, it's going to backfire on you. You know what I mean? I've been a victim to that. You know what I mean? I let things pile up for a long time and I will lash out and people will be confused as to why I would be lashing out. You know what I mean? And it's, it was genuinely my, it was at, uh, technically my fault at the end of the day because, you know, like I said, you know, I grew up in a real tough household. Mom was tough. My mom was tough as nails, bro. She was a fucking gangster. And my dad, you know, he, he was, he was a great father. Let's not get it wrong, but, um, he wasn't someone who really spoke about his emotions too much neither. So I didn't think I he was the person to really go to and talk to about that. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's why I made that new channel. I haven't uploaded in a little while, man. It's probably been about a week since the last time I uploaded, but we definitely going to get that shit popping on there, man. So um, be on the lookout for that. But shout out to everybody that's in the building, man. Hit the like button as soon as you come in. We're going to get to the boxing talk very shortly. There were some interesting things that had happened in the boxing world today, and I feel the need to... Disgusting. You, you know what I mean? Shout out to the 13 people that's in the building. We only got six likes, man. Let's get the likes up. 
Let's get the likes up, man. Stop motion said, tough times don't last. Watch, that's a fact. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. You know what I mean? I heard that quote before. I fuck with that heavy. Stop motion MMA. I subscribe to your new channel. Yeah, I saw you comment there, my brother. I appreciate that very much, man. Rogers, Rogers the second says, as a casual, uh, as a casual, I don't know. I don't know who you're referring to as a casual. I don't know if you're calling yourself a casual. Um, that's not who I am at all. But um, I'm gonna continue reading what you commented. You said, as a casual, do you think boxers cutting too much weight is a way of cheating themselves, like Ryan and perhaps Haney? Do you think boxers cutting too much weight? Oh, you referring to yourself as a casual? Oh, okay, ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, hopefully you transition onto a hardcore boxer fan. But I'm trying to get the understanding of your question. Do you think boxers cutting too much weight a way of cheating themselves? Um, I don't really know how to answer that. You so because they're cutting weight, you're, you're asking pretty much is them cutting too much weight a way of cheating themselves? What do you mean by cheating themselves? Seek and Destroy says, Mizuma, are you growing out your hair? Uh, I was thinking about it. You know what I mean? It was something that I was definitely thinking about. I wanted to try a new look. I was probably, I was going to try, you know, braid my shit and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the women in my life aren't too, you know, aren't too enthused by this style. So I might have to cut it down, man, to, you know what I mean, appease them. You know what I mean? My, my lady, my mom, they not satisfied with it. They ain't fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Silks, that's hilarious because I said I was going to get dreads and they shot that shit down immediately. You know what I mean? My dad had dreads and all types of shit. I, I would encourage it, but, you know, I don't think I got, like, man, I hate uh, having, like, extra responsibilities and shit, bro. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll, be, I'll do a good job keeping up with my dreads. I ain't going to lie to you if I was to get them. Shout out to Southwest Dice. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, Chris says, I got Haney this Saturday. Okay. That's what's up. I got Haney as well. Seek and Destroy says, Wado, wow, you can do what you want. You're a grown man. I mean, that's a fact. You know what I mean? I could definitely, like, if I was definitely, like, passionate about it, then I would just follow through with it and really wouldn't really care what they say. But, you know, uh, you know, I definitely, at the same time, I do take advice from, you know, the women that are in my life. You know what I mean? Women got a good understanding of, you know, what other women, you know, like. You know what I mean? I like to, I like to look presentable. You know what I mean? They telling me something a bad look. You know what I mean? That's most likely what a lot of other women going to think. I don't really care for other women's opinion, but you get what I mean. I'm trying to, you know, present myself in the best way possible. But, uh, yeah, definitely a grown man. That's a fact. You know what I mean? I'm damn near pushing 30. But at the same time, you know what I mean? I do like to listen to women in my life. I listen, I, I'm going to keep it a buck. I listen to women more than I listen to men. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that, that's about it, bro. So let's get into the boxing talk, man. Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, they had their final press conference, man. And Tank Davis and Shakur Stevenson, they beefing on social media has continued. Silks Bando said 30 to new 40. Oh, man. I was hoping you said 30 to new 20. Shit. Okay. Uh, Watch No Face says, is Tank an emotional fighter? I mean, he's definitely an emotional fighter, but it's one of those things where if he is emotional, it seems to, he seems to uh, become sharper. You know what I mean? There, there's fighters that when they get emotional, they lose sight of the game plan and, you know, uh, they, they fall apart in there mentally. You know what I mean? And they, they make they make it a tougher night than what it needs to be. Uh, for example, Teofimo Lopez, he's one of them dudes that when he gets emotional, you know what I mean, that's the best spot to get him in because he's not himself. He resorts to doing shit that could get him in trouble. Tank, on the other hand, when he gets emotional, it seems as if, you know, it gives him extra motivation. It seems as if getting him mad is the last thing that you want to do. You see what I mean? That's what it looks like in all honesty. There's some people that you uh, can afford pissing off and it could work in your favor. And there's people that you piss off that could really get you in a fucked up situation. So you got to move cautiously. You know what I mean? It, it goes case by case. So Tank is definitely emotional. You know what I mean? He, he show it on social media all the time. However, um, it doesn't seem to, like, go to his detriment. It seems like it works out in his favor most of the time when, you know, he takes things personal. You know what I'm saying? So, 
you know, being emotion, being emotional, you know what I mean? That could be a bad quality, but I feel like it works in Tank's favor most of the time. But God says when Tank get emotional, people went to sleep. That's a fact. Or they really got hurt. But he was arguing with Roley. Roley paid the price. You know what I mean? I think that would have happened regardless of whether they had something personal going on or not. You feel what I mean? But, you know, Ryan Garcia talked crazy. You know what I mean? He rose to the occasion. It looked phenomenal in the process. So, like I said, some fighters, they could get emotional and fall off their game. And there's other fighters that get emotional and they rise to the occasion. So you got to move cautiously. You got to know what buttons to press with uh, whichever person. You feel what I mean? But let's get into the Ryan Garcia and uh, Devin Haney final press conference, man. Uh, it was it was a pretty, you know, it wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be, man. I thought there was a lot of dead moments in the final press conference. But, you know, Ryan Garcia, you know, he's staying on that bullshit. You know what I mean? He's really uh, pushing this promotion all the way to the end, in all honesty, man. Um, he came out. <laughs> he was a little bit quiet at first, but, you know, he, he definitely got in his bag. He was arguing with Team Haney in the crowd. Uh, Devin Haney's mother showed up too. I thought that was pretty funny, and she was talking about that she that she bite people and shit like that. I thought that was pretty funny, man. The Haney the Haney family is pretty funny. The, the mom and the dad, you see what I mean? So I, I thought that uh, that was pretty funny. Uh, Devin Haney's mom called out Ryan in the crowd, but Ryan Garcia, man, he you know he started off by thanking Jesus and you know saying God, Jesus is the greatest. You know what I mean? Which is okay. You know what I mean? You entitled to believe that. You know you. You have the freedom to whatever religion you want to believe in. But however, um, shortly afterwards, he was telling another man that, you know, he was going to make him suck his dick. So I thought that was very weird. Um, that was a weird way to close out the press conference. And the crazy part was he went from thanking Jesus to saying that within minutes time. So, um, you know, that's Ryan Garcia for you. That boy off his rocker. That boy cuckoo for cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for sure. You know what I mean? That boy definitely uh, got a couple loose screws. There ain't no doubt about it. I think that, like I said, I think that this is a little bit of promotion uh, with a little pinch of, you know, mental health issues as well. You know what I mean? Sick and Destroy said, hey, yo, that ain't a pause on my part, my brother. That's me quoting exactly what he said. He said that to another man. You got to tell, you're going to have to send some pause emojis over to Ryan Garcia's account. You know what I mean? I'm just quoting what the man said. You feel what I mean? So that, that's Ryan Garcia for you. You know what I mean? And Devin Haney was just as confused as we all were. And he was like, yo, this dude really got issues. You see what I mean? That's the point that Devin Haney has come to. He was like, yo, bro, like, I, I don't really know how to take this dude. Like, he a little bit, like, he out of pocket. You feel what I mean? Um, Bill Haney had a moment as well, man. He pulled out another book. You know what I mean? Psychology for Dummies. And uh, Ryan Garcia threw that shit in the crowd or wherever the hell, wherever the hell he threw it. I didn't get to see the angle in which he threw it, but, you know, he, he definitely in his bag. <laughs> Ryan Garcia definitely in his bag, man. Um, he, he charged up for sure. Um, so, you know, that was a pretty cool final press conference, I guess. Bernard Hopkins didn't have much to say. Um, De La Hoya did what he needed to do. Eddie did what he needed to do. Bill Haney spoke his piece. You know, Devin Haney didn't really have much to say neither. But what I want to get into is the video that I had made earlier. And uh, speaking about exactly that 500K bet, now, you know, you know, the, the, the bets is starting to get old, man, because a lot of these dudes don't even follow through on their bets anyway. They shake hands, and then after the fight, you know, nobody's really getting compensated after the fact. And these bets go back far, way back, way back, like Fernando Vargas and Oscar De La Hoya. They had made a bet. You know what I'm saying? I forgot exactly what the amount was. But, uh, you know, no, I think it, no, it was Fernando Vargas and Shane Mosley. It was Fernando Vargas and Shane Mosley, and Shane Mosley ended up knocking Fernando out, and Fernando actually paid the man, so he was a man in his word. Um, El Coyote, he said, did Chris Colbert ever pay Ryo? Um, after Ryo knocked him out, he was like, yo, man, the best off. Like, he didn't even want his money. He was trying to, he was trying to be cool about it. And Colbert was like, no, nah, man, let's run it back, man. Uh, let's run it back, man. It's one and one. It's like, it's not really one and one. I mean, like, like in the, in the history books, yeah, but – the people know, you know what I mean? You ain't really win that first fight neither. It is what it is. You see what I mean? But Ryo called off the bet himself, you know what I mean? He felt relieved after getting his victory. He just wanted to call it cool between the two, you know what I mean? Because it was definitely getting a little bit personal. You said Tito Ricardo bet too? 
Yeah, I forgot about that one. But I know for a fact Fernando Vargas and Shane Mosley did. So that's what's up. Did you see Colbert new podcast? No, nah, not at all. I don't. I, I really dislike Chris Colbert, so um, I definitely won't be tuned into his podcast. Fuck Chris Colbert. <laughs> Real shit. Uh, nobody want to see that man talk. What I want to see you talk for, bro? We, you, you need to wake up. Shit, you need to wake up. You need to bounce back. Cause the last thing that we want, the last thing we remember from you is you going to sleep and you want to wake up and do a podcast and shit, man. Get the fuck out of here. Nobody want to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that, that's just me. So let, let's go back to the final press conference, man. I'm not trying to get too distracted in these comments, man. You know, I got a short attention span or whatever. So what I want to get into is this 500 K bet, right? This 500 K bet that, you know, Bill Haney had proposed Devin Haney, you know, emphasized it. It caught Ryan Garcia's attention. Now, what concerned me about this press conference is how the way Ryan Garcia's team was acting to that 500K bet. It seems like Derrick James and Henry Garcia were doing everything they can in that moment to get Ryan to not take on that bet, which is pretty concerning to me in all honesty. Because if y'all have any type of confidence in Ryan Garcia making weight, then I don't know if you guys would have really inserted yourselves in this conversation and be like, you know, don't don't all I know is bro if I know my fighters on weight or there's no doubt in my mind that he's making weight I wouldn't involved it I wouldn't have involved myself in that bet I'd have let him take the bet cool he ain't gonna give you 500k because he's gonna make weight cool but the fact that they were like jumping you know trying to jump into the you know the situation to tell Ryan Garcia to ignore him and shit like that I thought that was very telling I thought that was very telling. And I want you guys to see something real quick. I want I want to pull this up. And I want y'all to see how Derrick James reacts once Ryan Garcia accepts the bet anyway. You see what I mean? I thought it was very interesting. It was like, like, uh, like Derrick James is like, fuck. Like, he really took the bet type shit. You know what I mean? Now, I could be overanalyzing. I could be, you know, just paying attention to too much. But, uh, you know, let, let, let's really look at this. Look, see, look, Fight Hub posted six hours ago. Ryan Garcia, dad, and Derrick James freak out over 500K. See, I knew I wasn't tripping, and I put my video out, I think. When did I put that video out saying that? Hold on. I put that video out. Okay, I put the video out four hours ago, but I made it around, like, the same time. Um, I put it out. I had made the video around the same time, the interview, I mean, the press conference happened. <laughs> Share this screen with y'all. I want y'all to pay attention to Derrick James' reaction when uh when Ryan Garcia ends up taking the bet and not listening to the people around him. Now you should know that Ryan Garcia don't listen to nobody but himself. Yeah, at least that Devin will will go to the middle of the ring and slug it out with you. Do you believe that's going to happen? No, he won't. Why don't you think that? What do you think I'll do? I just I just don't think you're going to go in the middle of the ring. I just I mean that that would be stupid. Why? All right, come, come to center. Come to center. I'll meet you in the center. <laughs> what the is center. See, now, I did mention this earlier where I was like, yo, Devin Haney keeps talking about fighting in the center of the ring, and that was why I was starting to, like, uh, get the idea that maybe that maybe Devin Haney is getting a little bit out of character. You know what I mean? Because, honestly, being in the center of the ring with Ryan Garcia not really showcasing too much movement, could put him at a better advantage of landing a clean shot on Devin Haney. Devin Haney's not that elusive. You know what I mean? He's not the type of dude that stands in front of you and can make you miss type shit. He likes to use his range. You know, he takes steps backwards. He gives you lateral movement. Just overall, just movement around the ring. You know what I mean? He uses – his first line of defense is his, is his athleticism. You know what I mean? He's not like Shakur where he could stand in front of you and make you miss by a half an inch or some shit like that. Wilfred Benitez type shit. You know what I'm saying? So Devin Haney has been saying this, you know, confidently too, confidently too, since uh, since uh, fucking, you know, the beginning of the buildup. He genuinely believes he could beat Ryan in the center of the ring. So pay attention to that for the uh, on Saturday. Pay attention to see if Devin Haney's actually gonna do this. Let's move on. Center, all right, we're going to the center of the ring. We'll see what you do, <laughs> bro. Nobody's worried about that. Go run. And go to the center, do whatever the f you want. I'm gonna hunt you down. I'm just gonna fucking knock you out. Five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand. 
Like Pay attention to Derrick James, though. Know, watch. Hey, yo, I just wanted to show this too, right? 100%. I wanted to show this too. Look, look what Ryan Garcia is showing his abs, right? I'm not picking on a rape. Hold on, look. Right there, right? Now, I know y'all don't really care to look at other men's body and shit like that, but if you look at his ab his abdominal area, it seems to have significantly changed throughout the days because when I had seen him do his grand arrival, it looked like he had a lot of water in his abdominal area. And Ryan Garcia notices too. That's why he be like pulling his stomach down and shit to show his abs more. He does like little certain poses to stick his abs out more. But right now, he's not really doing that. You know what I mean? So it seems like the water that he once had in his abdom his abdominal area is no longer there. So which lets me know that he's currently in the weight cutting process. He's eliminating water from his body. You see what I mean? And, and looking at his his abdominal area, it doesn't look like he has much to lose there. You know what I mean? It don't look like he got much to lose there. And Ryan Garcia is not like a you know a dude that really packs on too much weight in other areas of his body. Pause. You know what I mean? He's not like a fat back motherfucker, fat arms motherfucker, fat face. His face pretty much stays the same. So a lot of the weight that he carries seems to be in his abdominal area. So, um, you know, if he still has some pounds to lose, and there might be some truth to what Bill Haney and Debbie Haney are saying um, in their beliefs that Ryan Garcia won't make weight, it seems like it's going to be hard to cut. If that's all he really has left, like in terms of water in his system right here, those last few pounds might be really hard to cut for Ryan Garcia, which is probably why he fought Oscar Duarte at a catch weight of 143. That's just my personal opinion. Y'all probably don't see things how I do, but I help fighters cut weight all the time. I cut weight myself, and sometimes them last two to three pounds be a fucking bitch to get off. You see what I mean? And based off what I'm seeing right here in this picture, well, in this video, it doesn't look like he has much more to lose. So it's either he's on weight right now, or He's still overweight. He's going to have a hell of a time getting it off. That's just what I'm noticing. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm going to get to the comments in a little bit. Let's get to the comments in a little bit. Hold on. Let, let this video rock, fall through. Hey, so whoever come up away, pay 500000 100%. 500000 I'm not going to come out of weight. See, they telling him right now. They telling him right now to not pay Bill Haney any mind. Pay attention to this. Look, look, he's waving it off. Why is Henry waving it off? Why are you waving it off if, if, if you know, him not being on weight isn't true? Why are you waving it off? Why are you jumping to his defense so quickly? That That's a red flag for me. Look at Derrick James. It's a bet. 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 Bro, look at fucking Derrick James' face when he turns away. He's like, man, is he fucking serious? He couldn't believe Ryan Garcia was doing this. Let's look, look, look at, look at, look at, look at Derrick James' face the entire time. Henry Garcia is like, "Yo, don't do it. Yo, don't do it. Don't pay him any money." But Ryan cannot listen to nobody. Look, it's a bet. Derrick James, it's a bet. It's a bet. It's a bet. It's a bet. He turns away. Five hundred. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Derrick James is stressing the fuck out with this dude, man. We be seeing it, bro. We've seen it happen multiple times, bro. I would not be surprised if this is Derrick James' last fight with Ryan Garcia, bro. I'm telling you right now. And I won't be surprised if it's Derrick James being the one that walks away from this situation. Ryan Garcia has been stressing this man out consistently since this fight has been announced. Do y'all remember when he was shadow boxing and he was crossing his feet and Derrick James is sitting on he's sitting on uh, he, he's sitting on the floor and he's looking at Ryan like this. And he's like, and you could just tell on his face that he looks annoyed or confused. He definitely is expressing one of those moves. And I thought that was very telling, but I let it go because, you know, sometimes I overanalyze and, you know what I mean? Sometimes I just be thinking too deep into shit. You know what I mean? That's one of the problems that I have. But this right here, I'm convinced. I'm convinced from this situation. Like, it, it's a lot of red flags from Ryan Garcia's camp, bro. It don't seem like they too confident in the weight department, man. Let's look over there one more time before I get into the comments. Ryan Garcia is flexing his abs. All right, cool. 100%. So Haney don't care about none of that. He bringing up the bet. Look, waving it off. It's a bet. It's a bet. 
Look, look, look. He going back and forth with his dad right now. He will not listen to his father, man. Right? Devin trying to get his attention. Look, and they just telling him, yo, don't do it. Yo, don't do it. Ryan. Hey, hey Ryan. Whatever you say, Dad. I hey. got you. Whatever you say, Dad. Just completely hey, disrespects his father, bro. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you say, Dad. And then goes back to still take on the bet. You know what I mean? Just going against his father, bro. This dude, Ryan, is a fucking goofy, bro. 100,000 per pound. Okay. Just do a shake on it? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's bro, look at Derrick James' face, bro. I think that's fucking hilarious. Okay. Let's do a shake on it. Yeah. Uh, look, look, look at Derrick James' face. He like, ah, what yeah, that's, the fuck? That's professionalism. That's professionalism. Hey, where's your mom at, baby? Where's, where's your mom? Oh, I'm going to go flirt with your mama. Ooh, she about to be fine. Oh, uh, yeah, I want some of your mama. I want your mama now. Uh, get, hey, get your, hey, your mama probably in my DMs. Mm. Top of my mom, yeah, that fear coming in your mouth like a bitch, dog. I put my damn mouth. Yeah, that boy off his rocker, bro. I'm sorry, something really is wrong with this man. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Yeah, bro. I I, I thought that was very telling. So. Just looking at that whole situation from Ryan Garcia's uh, team, they not that confident in this man making weight, bro. I'm trying to tell you, bro. I genuinely believe that when he fought Oscar Duarte at 143 pounds, it was kept under wraps because initially the fight was supposed to be at 140 pounds. Remind, mind you, Oscar Duarte came off from 135. So he's naturally already coming up in weight. He had to put on an additional three pounds. You feel what I mean? So what I'm saying is, I think that initially that was a 140-pound fight. Then Ryan Garcia, you know, probably expressed to his team that he was having trouble getting the last few pounds off, and he wanted to be a little bit more comfortable. You know what I mean? He didn't want to kill himself to lose those last few pounds. So, you know, he asked for that. I'm sure they probably gave Oscar Duarte a couple more dollars or whatever the situation is, and they fought at that catch weight. Nobody had heard about the catch weight until the way in. You see what I mean? So that, that, that's what it is, bro. That's what it is. That's what I wanted to point out. And you can just see uh, it's a lot of red flags over there. It ain't really looking good, man. Really ain't looking good. So if Ryan Garcia misses weight by a pound or, you know, he's off a cup by, by a few ounces or a good amount of ounces, don't be surprised. Or if he does make weight, you know, let's not be surprised if, you know, Ryan Garcia looked dead up there. Just be on the lookout for that. I thought that was very interesting. So, But we got 37 people in the building, man. Hit the like button if you appreciate the content, man. If you appreciate the game that I'm kicking on the live right now, man. We got 16 likes currently. Let's get them up, man. Let's get them up. It is very much appreciated. Now, let's get into these comments, man, because I see a whole bunch of comments that I have got and I did not respond to. Let's come all the way up here. So Bando says, I feel like he'll make weight if he really uh if he really playing a character. Okay. Okay, okay. He said, I lost 12 pounds in one day before I'm not a pro neither. Well, that's not very healthy, my brother. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Dabrowski says, I wonder what they both naturally walk around at. Well, they they, they bigger dudes for sure. I think Devin Haney, if I had to guess, he uh well, he rehydrated the 165. So that lets you know that that's how uh that's the weight that his body goes to when he's in like you know really good shape. So if Devin Haney is slightly out of shape, which I doubt he ever is, I'm sure he walk around in the 70s. I'm sure he walked around in the 70s. When y'all see Devin Haney outside of camp, his face be nice and round and shit like that. Um, he definitely walked around high 60s, 70 area for sure. Now, Ryan Garcia, I don't really know how much he be. He don't look like he put on too much weight. You know what I mean? Like I said, he be looking a little heavy in the abdomen, in the, in the stomach area and shit like that. But for the most part, he, pro he probably walks around slightly lighter than Devin Haney. 
You know what I mean? Because he is tall, but I, I think Devin Haney has like a bigger frame in all honesty. That's what I think. So if I had to guess, they probably they probably both walk around like a similar weight. You know, Ryan probably walks around like mid sixties, and uh, Devin probably walks around you know like seventies. If I had to guess, I'm not sure though. Devin Haney, he looked like he's struggling making 142. I don't think he's gonna be there too much longer. We might have to kiss that tank fight goodbye, honestly. The mm -hmm. <laughs> says Derek thinking about Earl in the good times. Yo, that's crazy, bro. I'm sure that, that I'm sure that makes him appreciate Earl a lot more. Going through that shit with Ryan, but at the same time, man, it seemed like Earl did Derek James dirty, so we'll see. <laughs> Abdul. Y'all petty, man. Abdul Wahid need to move up quick. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to speak about that too because you know, looking at these pictures of Devin Haney, even looking at that video with Devin Haney, man, he's wearing the glasses, you know what I mean? But I can imagine, I can imagine that his eyes don't really look the best um underneath them glasses, man. Cause his cheeks look real sunken in, his cheekbones look real uh out there, you know what I mean? Really poking out for sure. Uh pause, I guess you could say. And uh you know, usually when the cheekbones, you know what I mean, are, are really coming out like that, it lets you know that a lot of water has been taken out of your system. You know what I mean? So I can imagine with the cheekbones being all out and shit like that, you know what I mean, his eyes probably look real out there as well, look real exposed as well. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and this is only his second fight at 140 pounds. So it lets me know that he might not have much longer to be at 140 pounds neither. You know what I mean? Maybe that, that additional five pounds probably makes him feel better, but at the same time, it's still a sacrifice. You know what I mean? You got to think about it. If this man's coming into camp 170 pounds, like, like we saying right here in this discussion, then he has to cut 30 pounds throughout the course of eight weeks. You know what I mean? So if you divide, let, let's see, let's do a little bit of math right here. We say 30 divided by eight. He's essentially has to lose three pounds per week. Three pound three and three fourths. He's gonna have to lose that and he's gonna have to lose that throughout the course of eight weeks. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, you gotta continue putting food in your system, you gotta stay hydrated. So your weight is literally going up and down, up and down, up and down. And as you go on, if you as the weeks go on, you're eating less and less and less and less. You see what I mean? Um, so, you know, that five pounds might help out Devin Haney, but it's not going to last too long. You know what I mean? Uh, you can see it look like his body, like, immediately uh, acclimated to the 140-pound division, which lets you know how much he was really dying making that 135-pound weight limit. You feel what I mean? So I think, you know, Devin Haney doesn't have much more time left at 140. That's what I think. You know what I mean? We're just going to have to wait and see this performance. Let's see him in the later rounds. If he still has, if he has a lot of energy in the later rounds, that lets you know that he didn't lose too much of his fight in the gym. But if he looks a little burnt out in the later rounds, or he's taking some of the later rounds off, then that's pretty concerning. You know what I mean? And it might be a situation where Devin Haney might have to move up the welterweight soon. You see, you, you feel me? That might be something. You know, he's bringing it up for a reason, y'all. Like if he's if he's considering a move up to 147, is it might be because. You know, he's having he, – it's still a sacrifice to make 140. That five pounds can help, but it's not doing, you know, all the help. Maybe that additional seven pounds, you know what I mean, at welterweight could help him a lot more. Well, I know for a fact it'll help him a lot more. And I guarantee if he go up to 47, he fuck around and not come back down. You know what I mean? So hopefully – you know what I mean, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully he makes the weight pretty easily. He doesn't look that bad and – you know what I mean? Hopefully he can make that wait for some time to come because, you know, that Javante Davis fight uh, ticking. You know what I mean? That, that fight that fight is really going to take a while to be made, in all honesty. Devin, uh, Tank was talking about he got a six, seven fight plan. You know what I mean? And they involved in that plan, being Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. But where do they fall on that list? Because if Tank Davis is fighting two times a year, then it's going to take three years to, you know, you know, get that fight done with Devin Haney or Shakur or both. You feel what I mean? Where is Devin Haney on that six or seven fight list? If he's at the end, then 
you know, Devin Haney's going to have to stay at 140 for an additional three years. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Yeah, Benavidez could end his career at heavyweight, but I think he'll top. I think like his best moments will be done at cruiserweight or bridger weight, whatever the hell they want to call it. Yeah, Benavidez put on weight, no problem. He gonna do, he's gonna do very well at 175 too, and it seems like David Morell followed him up there. So, you know, Morell applying a lot of pressure on Benavidez. He gonna have to bust a move soon. Like I know you want that Canelo fight and all that. But you got this man chasing you around, so you might have to go take care of that. You feel what I mean? He moving up to 175 at the same time you do because you said motherfuckers running from you. So who are you talking about? Who are you talking about running away from you? You know what I mean? Because only one person moved up from 168 to 175, and that's Benavidez. So are you saying that Benavidez is running from you? If that's the case. Benavidez got to go handle that, bro, no matter how many fights he got. You know what I mean? And then, and what's sad is it might be a lose-lose situation for Benavidez if he defeats Morel because, you know, if he beats Morel, they're going to be like, oh, he wasn't experienced enough. He he only had 10 fights, blah, blah, blah. But then if he loses to the man, you essentially lost to somebody with 10 fights. You know what I mean? So it, I think it's a lose-lose for him, but, you know, he's going to he gonna have to take that. He's going to have to take that on so people can stop uh, putting out this, you know, idea that he's ducking more of jay cash says in my opinion benavidez got 10 to 16 months to fight morale it's a duck so essentially you're giving that man a year to step up to the plate yeah it seems like that pressure is really coming on because to keep it a thousand bro that fight not happening man that fight not happening with benavidez and canelo at least not anytime soon you feel what I mean? So, I mean, he might as well he might as well take on the David Morrell fight. There's a little bit of a demand for it, so why not? Yeah, you know I mean, but Canelo said, "Yo, he's making it clear that he don't care about what we talking about. He don't care what we want. He feels like he's solidified. You know what I mean? In the sport, and he and he earned his right to duck fighters. So that's pretty much what he said. You know what I mean? Uh, he earned his right to move however he wants and fight whoever he wants." So with that, I mean, based off of that logic, then you could also say that, you know, you earned your right to duck whoever you want. You feel what I mean? So that, that, that's what's going on with, with Canelo Alvarez. And, you know, uh, Benavidez is going to have to move on, man. You know what I mean? He's going to fight Alexander Rosedick for that WBC final eliminator. And uh, he might be in a position where he could fight, you know, Better Beef and Bivol. I mean, that's a great opportunity for Undisputed. That's something that we'll definitely love to see. Hopefully, Turkey Alice Sheik backs that up, you know what I mean, and, and gets that going. And, um, you know, if he's able to defeat either one of them dudes, then, you know, his stock is going to skyrocket, you know what I mean? And it might be a situation where, you know, Canelo Alvarez might not have no choice but to, you know, pass the torch to Benavidez. You know what I mean? Because Mexico going to back Benavidez heavy if he beats either Bivol or Better Beef, honestly. El Coyote says next 10 months it won't happen. He will get a fight with Bivol Better be. I hope so. Silks Bando says Moral team did turn down the fight though. Yeah, I remember I remember seeing something where like the manager said that you know they was trying to build that up and you know little shit like that. So I find it funny that you know Morel was going around saying that you know people are running from him, but then your old team had like shot down the possibility of you fighting Benavidez. You feel what I mean? I don't think Benavidez is ducking morale at all. I think that he's extremely confident in his abilities. He feels like he could beat anybody in the world. He gives me that uh he gives me that energy. He makes me uh he convinces me that you know he genuinely feels like he can't be faded. You feel what I mean? So that that's that's just what it is. You see what I mean? Jeffrey says, do you think De La Hoya will distance himself from Ryan after the fight because of his behavior? Um, That's a great question. I think that as long as they have some contractual obligations for each other, uh, from each other, I don't think De La Hoya will have 
the option to distance himself. You know what I mean? He got to abide by the contract. You feel what I mean? So, you know, if, they, if, if Ryan ends up becoming like a free agent after this fight or whatever the hell the situation is, then, you know what I mean, I could definitely see De La Hoya uh, distancing himself. But as long as there's a contract between them and he's obligated to give Ryan a certain amount of fights per year and give him a certain bag a year, then uh, I don't think he'll have the option to distance himself. Now, what I am going to say is if I'm Oscar De La Hoya, I'm not going to be too worried about, you know, Ryan Garcia after this fight if he comes up short. You see what I mean? If I'm Oscar De La Hoya, then I'm trying to build up other guys to be the next big star out of Golden Boy because it seems like Ryan Garcia is being thrown into the dungeon right now. He came up short in that one fight with Javante. Now he's going up against a different style than uh, Devin Haney, but it's also a style that could very much defeat him. You know what I mean? So if he takes two losses and three bouts, you got to start reevaluating your promotional stable and be like, all right, now who, who the fuck do I – um, put my focus on to become that, you know, that that big name, that big popular name that can replace Ryan. You know what I mean? Because when Canelo left, he pretty much uh, used Ryan to fill the void to the best of his ability. Now that Ryan seems to be going out of this, going out the window, and his stock is going to drop after this fight, very possibly. Um, Oscar De La Hoya got to do something, man. You know what I mean? He's going to have to, you know, bust a move and, you know what I mean, really get a fighter on and popping, whether it's William Cepeda, uh shit, he better hope Jaime Munguia come out on top against Canelo. You see what I mean? Little situations like that. That's what I'm doing if I'm Oscar De La Hoya. So I'm not gonna say necessarily distancing myself. Fucking annoying, bro. Um, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily distancing myself from Ryan, but I'm definitely you know looking over my stable and be like, all right, who's gonna be the next one? that's going to represent Golden Boy well, or who's going to be that next popular fighter up out of my stable. See what I mean? What the fuck is going on, bro? Don't fucking, don't no firefighters annoying as fuck, bro. I'm probably like the only nigga in the world that don't like firefighters. Fucking annoying as hell. No, all that screeching and yelling for what? He gonna use Virgil to fill the void. I don't know, man, because Virgil Ortiz been having hella like health issues, man. I understand that he's had one fight. Son's going up to fifty four, and it seems like his health is okay. But it's still, in my opinion, a, a red flag by that man name. You see what I mean? Because it could very much be a situation where you know he's cutting weight for this fight, and then you know his health deteriorates again, and now they got to postpone this fight. There's people that genuinely believe that based off of the condition that Virgil Ortiz has, and I've talked, I've talked to a doctor. Yeah, you know I mean, I said my gym, and it was like, yo, that could be a recurrent thing, and he might have to hang up his gloves because of it. You see what I mean? And what for what the doctor had told me at the gym that that could happen from overworking yourself. Yeah, you know I mean, most likely Virgil Ortiz is overworking himself because he's trying to get that weight off. You feel what I mean? So um, 154 might be a comfortable weight for him, honestly. You know, maybe he doesn't struggle making that weight too much, but you know, who's to say that you know in the next couple fights? You know, Virgil has a tough time making 54, and then his health deteriorates again. I don't know, man. Like, Virgil Ortiz, he definitely got what it he, – he has what it takes. You know what I mean? He's a solid dude, big puncher, applies a lot of pressure, and, you know, I think he has a 100% knockout ratio as far as I'm concerned. So, with that being known, um, he has the potential to be the face of Golden Boy, but is his health going to be able to keep up with him? Is his health going to stay consistent? You know what I mean, because I'm one of those people who – uh, health has deteriorated multiple times. That My health has been very inconsistent, which is why I had to stop boxing. You feel what I mean? So these things that we really got to assess and just think about, you know what I mean, a little bit. He said it's going to be Schofield. I don't know if Schofield got it, bro. I ain't going to lie to you, man. I don't know if he got it. And to be honest with you, bro, I could be wrong. I don't know if Golden Boy want a black fighter to be the face of their company. I don't know. I don't think so. I think they specialize in promoting, you know, Hispanic fighters, you know, Mexican fighters to be specific. Um, I don't know if they want a black fighter to represent the promotional company, but we'll see. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. 
Has Virgil boxed since his bad health? Feels like a long time since I've seen him active. I think he fought one time. He's fought one time since then, and he ended up getting a knockout or whatever. Let, let's check right here. I'll let you know right now. But I do, I do recall him fighting recently. Let's see. Yeah, he, he beat up on uh, Frederick Lawson. He stopped him in the first round. And that was at like 156 pounds. You see what I mean? But he gunned him up out of there. He gunned him up out of there in one round. Yeah, he got that sus stoppage. Yeah, I don't know, bro. These refs be funny money nowadays, bro. The judges, everything, man. You got to be careful about everything, even in the amateurs. That's why I tell my guys, I was like, yo, if you can stop this motherfucker, man, get him up out of there because, you know, you don't know what these judges think. I'll be feeling like sometimes these judges be having these scorecards filled out before the fight even happened. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. It's a lot to, it's a lot to unpack when it comes to like you know the dirty side of boxing, the corrupt side of boxing. El Coyote says, "What's your thoughts about the undercard? You really think this is an eighty dollar pay per view? Um, the undercard, undercard wise, absolutely not. You know what I mean? I think the undercard is very underwhelming in all honesty. But you know, I think the main event sells itself. I think the main event alone, you know what I mean, can make a strong case for why it's eighty dollars." You feel what I mean? Um, but in terms of like, the, if we speak specifically about the undercard, it's a trash undercard. I ain't gonna lie to you. I think that they could have did better with that. Yeah, you know I mean, let's look over the undercard. Let's see if they got it on box right yet. So they got John Ramirez versus David Jimenez. So that's scrappy. Scrappy, right? That Yo, uh, scrappy's pretty impressive, man. He said that he didn't step into a boxing gym until like seven years ago. So for him to get this far that quickly, that that's pretty impressive, man. So salute the Scrappy for that. Um, he's fighting somebody by the name of, you know, David Jimenez, which seems to be a step up fight, honestly, because he's ranked number fourteen in the world. So that that that's interesting. Then we got Sergey Dervinchenko versus Von Alexander. Now I'm familiar with both of these dudes. And, you know, Sergey Dervinchenko is on the decline, and Von Alexander is too. But that could be a tough, action-packed type fight. That could be exciting. Um, Beck the Bully versus Pierre Hubert. That's an undefeated fighter, 22-0 from France. Beck probably going to steamroll this dude, bro. I ain't going to lie to you because looking at this dude's resume right here is absolute garbage, bro. This man that had a draw with who? A 3-0. and Okay. So he's beat a one and oh, one and two, one and two, three and oh, five and nine, 21 and 22, two and one, six, nine. He fought a two and oh, and he was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight and oh. Wow. You fought a two and oh, and you was eight and oh. Yeah, he's, yeah, his record is completely blown up, man. This is a situation where Beck could really, you know, show out and actually, you know, do something. You feel what I mean? Uh, Charles Conwell versus Nathaniel Gallimore. I mean, I, I'm aware of who Charles Conwell is. You know what I mean? Uh, Charles Conwell <laughs> is the dude that ultimately, you know, caught a body. You see what I mean? Unfortunately, with the Patrick Day situation. But, you know, he's bounced back since then. You know, he went through a real bad, like, uh, wave of, like, depression after that. But he's bounced back. And, you know, he's fighting Nathaniel Gallimore. Now, the, Nathaniel, Nathaniel Gallimore has been around the block for sure. But he has been a little inactive. I ain't going to lie to you. He's off like a, a year and three-month layoff. And um, he's been losing a lot lately, man, like losing a lot. Uh, you know, he done got stopped and beat by just about everybody in the, in the fucking uh, – uh, you know, to everybody at the PBC for real, for real. Serhi Bohachuk, you know what I mean? He got stopped. Uh, Eric uh, Sebastian Fundora knocked him out. He lost to Fundora. Paxi Teixeira, who Xander Zaya is going to be fighting next. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, lost to J-Rock. You know what I mean? This dude done lost to everybody and they mom on the PBC side. You see what I mean? So he going up against Charles Conwell. He might get steamrolled by Charles Conwell. That's a that's a tough, big-punching motherfucker. So, uh 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Kevin Newman. Oh, okay. I see why Kevin Newman been around. He's on the undercard. He ain't fighting nobody. Uh, Amari Jones. He ain't fighting nobody. Darius Foljam. That sounds familiar. Where do I know him from? Oh, okay. He was the one that fought uh, Lantez Fox. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this isn't the best undercard, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it, it's not that good. It's actually pretty bad, honestly. For an eighty dollar pay per view, I've seen better cards that were a lot less. I think the Caleb Plant and uh, David Benavidez card pay per view was cheaper than that, and uh, had a way better undercard. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they feel like this is a real popular fight, and people, you know, will spend that money to get into it. It is what it is. You know what I mean? But uh, probably the standout fight from this undercard. You know, Scrappy and David Jimenez, you know, we don't know who neither one of them dudes are really. You know what I mean? We heard Scrappy name a little bit. He began some clout on social media. But uh, David Jimenez, that's going to be a banger, though. I think that's going to be a banger. Uh, I think Charles Conwell going to have a sensational knockout against Gallimore. And Sergey Dervinchenko and Von Alexander, that might be a slept-on one. Because stylistically, that could be a good, really good fight. But besides that, you know, that's nothing that, you know, the the casual boxer fan would know, though. So, um, yeah, I'm not really I'm not really too big on this undercard. I ain't going to lie to you. But regardless, yeah, you know I mean, I'm definitely tuned in. They got my money because, you know, I got to come on here and show y'all love. You know what I mean? We're going to do that live fight party, so be on the lookout for that for sure. We're going to get this shit on and popping. Shout out to the 42 people that's in the building, man. Hit the like button, man. Hit the like button, man. Let's get this shit on and popping, man. And you know what? You know what, bro? Today gonna be the day. Today gonna be the motherfucking day. You know what I'm saying? No more of this Mr. Nice Guy shit. I'm about to get that. I'm about to get my buddy a call. The lion, I don't like how he treated the nation last time. I got a problem with that. You said Foljam is nice. Yeah, I'm familiar with him. I seen him fight Alantez Fox, and then I seen him beat um, early in his career. I know the dude Dave Murray from Delaware. I seen I seen that fight as well. He he stopped Dave Murray, so I'm, I'm familiar with Foljam. I'm familiar with a lot of these guys. I just don't be too big on him, so I don't really say too much. I said Von Alexander, not Devin. Von Alexander. He he uh for that middleweight and shit like that. That's most likely a middleweight contest, but yeah. Uh I'm gonna go live probably for the last two fights. You know what I mean? Cause I don't think anybody gonna be really paying attention to, you know what I mean, the undercard. So I'll probably go, I'll probably do my live fight party for Scrappy and Jimenez. And then go on for Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. You know what I'm saying? I think that I think that'll be what's best. But uh yeah, T.O. Siren just put his phone on airplane mode. We about to see, man. I'm sick of this motherfucker, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Man, what's up with your punk ass son? You know what I'm saying? Let's get into it. Hello, how you doing? Wow. This is Junior with the high school. Yo, he really did put his phone on airplane mode. Don't say that. He said he behind me. Yeah, all right. That'd be a dead motherfucker. He coming here. I ain't gonna incriminate myself, but there's a whole lot of protection around this crib. You know what I'm saying? I'd be a dead motherfucker. That's crazy, bro. That motherfucker turned his phone off. He was like, yo, we don't want no he said, I don't want no smoke with the nation, my brother. You know what I'm saying? He don't want no smoke with the nation. That boy definitely found his way up out that shit, bro. Tell me, yeah, yeah, call me in 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That motherfucker brushed the boy off. Okay. You know, it's crazy, though. Like, I'm going to end up running into you. 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking no gangster shit. Like, I'm going to do something to you. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to definitely talk to you about that. Like, yo, bro, called your phone. You ain't never answered type shit. Like, what's up with you? You know what I mean? Like, you, you've been requested by the nation. You feel what I mean? So you got to, you got to, you, you know what I'm saying? That shit like a subpoena. You got to show up for that motherfucker, bro. Stop playing with me, nigga. You know what I mean? He said, you can sleep him. You already know T.O. don't <laughs> do nothing. Bro, listen. Neither one of them could fuck with me, bro. I'm going to keep it a thousand. I think I'm going to box T.O. Fimo and he going to be leaping in the hooks on me and shit. Yeah, all right. Double leg. What are you talking about? Niggas forgot I was a national champion in wrestling. I'm a fucking multi-time national champion in wrestling. Before I was even boxing, I was a national champion in wrestling. When I was a young boy, from six years old all the way to 13. And I still and I still go to I still practice wrestling to this day. You know who you can ask about me? Eddie Alvarez. Ask Eddie Alvarez about me. We came up under the same high school. While well, I was on the junior team, this the high school had shut down by the time I was in like sixth grade. But Eddie Alvarez was one of the head, one of the uh, like spe- like guest coaches that used to come through here and there whenever he didn't have a fight. You know what I mean? He he know exactly what I get into. He was there when I won my first nationals out in, in Horsham, PA. Yeah, niggas know what it is. When I won the inter county wrestling league title, you know that. I was like the number one banner weight in the state at one point in time when I was <laughs> when I was a young boy, bro. I was nasty. You tripping. But uh yeah, that, that that's not relevant with boxing, but anyway. Shout out to 38 people that's in the building, man. Let me check, let me check the likes, man. Let me check the likes, man. We got 25 likes. We could do better than that. We got 38 people with 25 likes. Let, let's get them up. We can do better than that. Come on, man. We better than that. Let's go. Let's go. So uh, you know, I spoke about the Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia final press conference, man. Get my reaction to that. So we just gonna leave that to the side. And all honesty, bro, kind of tired about talking about Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, man. So I, I you know, I'm about, I'm about just as tired as them. Cause you know, when they doing interviews and shit like that, I'm on the channel constantly speaking about the fight. You know what I mean, repeating myself. You know what I mean, and all that good shit. So, uh, T.O. Senior scared of Keyshawn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keyshawn to put uh T.O. Senior to bed. You feel me? Yep. T.O. Scary sat there and watched his pop get slept and did nothing. That's a fact. Like he said, you was flipping them boy, man. I used to bully them dudes, man. They hated me. Whenever they see me on that tournament bracket, there was people that used to forfeit and all, bro. True story. I'm not capping, piping myself up, gassing myself, nothing, bro. That shit used to really happen. Talk about your boy Charlo. Man, I was trying to avoid that, bro, because I'm not really trying. You know what? Fuck it. Let's talk about Jamel Charlo, man. Shout out to my boy Anonymous for sending me this uh, post on Twitter earlier today. You know what I mean? Let's check it out. This says, according to Dan Rayfield, now, Dan Rayfield isn't the most reliable person, and I've called him out on it. In the past, hence why he has blocked me several years ago. <laughs> so I can't really see his uh tweets whenever he puts out information. So shout out to Anonymous for screenshotting and sending it over to me. He says, per source, <clears throat> Jamel Charlo has invoked his right as WBA 154 pound champion in recess to be the next opponent for titleist Israel Madrimov via letter sent this week to the WBA. So I don't know if y'all guys really understand this. So, you know, there was a rumor going around that Terrence Crawford was supposed to be fighting Israel Madrimov, um, you know, next, you know, under Turkey al You know what I mean? There was a big rumor coming out that Turkey al and Terrence Crawford was going to make their U.S. debut uh, and, you know, really get things popping. And the, pos- the strong possible opponent for Terrence Crawford was going to be Israel Madrimov. You know what I mean? So it seemed like that was the route that he was going to go because, you know, uh, Terrence Crawford, you know, he put in his petition to be the mandatory challenger for the WBO. You know, Sebastian Fundora fights Tim Zhu. He gets a six-month medical suspension to avoid the Terrence Crawford fight. And now Tim Zhu and Sebastian Fundora should be rematching each other at the end of the year. 
how convenient, right? So PBC is doing everything in their power to make sure that Terrence Crawford is not a factor in the 154-pound division. Pay attention, pay attention to what's happening. He defeated Earl Spence, right? Dominant fashion. Makes history off of the PBC, in all honesty, when initially they didn't even want him fighting to, uh, Earl Spence. Let's keep that in mind. PBC did not want Terrence Crawford to fight Earl Spence. Earl Spence was the one who forced their hand to make that fight happen, right? Let's move on. He defeats Earl Spence. He goes, he's trying to get the big fights. Canelo said no. You know what I mean? There was a rumor about Eubank that ended up being capped at the end of the day. So now he's looking at the 154-pound division. So what does he see? He sees Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora, about to fight for the WBO and the WBC. Unification fight, right? Huge fight. Terrence Crawford sees that opportunity to make history. He's like, yo, hold up. I had the WBO title. Maybe I could do what I did with Jeff Horn and petition to be the mandatory and be their next fight. Cool. He does it. The WBO approves him. They back him, right? They're like, all right, we're we going to do you that favor, man. We're going to make sure you're the ne you next for the WBO title. You know what I'm saying? They go. They let Sebastian Fundora and his team know, you know what I mean, after the fight. All of a sudden, you know, and, you know, it was a grueling fight between him and Tim Zhu. Ain't no doubt about it. He had a bloody nose or whatever. But they never really has said exactly why the suspension was six months long, which I thought was pretty funny. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I've seen people with more traumatic injuries that were able to bounce back quicker than Sebastian Fundora's medical suspension is. I've seen people with broken nose bounce back within three to four months. You know what I mean? I've seen people back in camp within six weeks of their injury. Facts. But this is like, like how, how severe was the nose fracture or breakage, whatever the hell you want to call it, for him to sit down for six months and not be able to start camp until the end of September. I don't know if that really makes sense to me, right? So they successfully get Terrence Crawford up out of the way. But, you know, I guess Turkey al hit Terrence Crawford's phone and was like, yo, I would like to do business with you. You a free agent. I don't really like to deal with promoters. I like to deal directly with the fighters. Let's make something happen. So they get to talking behind the scenes. Turkey al does business with Israel Madrimov, who had fought on a Saudi Arabia card not too long ago and became champion. So he's like... You know what I mean? I could give you this fight, man. Give you this money, whatever, whatever. It seems like everything is, you know, is going positive. It seems like everything is going well in terms of them talking things out and negotiating a potential fight. Now, according to this source, man, Jamel Charlo, who has came up out of hiding since getting his ass whooped by Canelo Alvarez, has sent a letter to the WBA stating how he's invoking his right to become uh, the next opponent for Israel Majumov coming up out of that champion and recess situation. Because if y'all do remember, pretty much every belt has been taken away from Jamel Charlo. You see what I mean? But the WBA, you know what I mean? Before taking his title, they have, sta they have put him in the, as the stat, like status-wise as the champion in recess. So typically when you're the champion in recess, you know what I mean? You could, you can, uh, you could pretty much activate that shit. You know what I mean? And be, pretty much be next in line for whoever ends up getting the belt. Because when you're a champion of recess, what happens is the belt becomes vacant. And you know what I mean? Whoever is ranked in the sanctioning body has to fight each other for that belt. Majumov ended up getting it. So now I guess Jamel's seen it happen. He see Terrence Crawford was about to finesse. He was like, hold up. Let me invoke my right so Terrence Crawford don't get this opportunity before me. Doing the most, bro. PBC is doing everything they can to make sure that Terrence Crawford is not in position to be a top dog at 54. Because if he does... You know what I mean? He's most likely going to be in line to face, you know what I mean, the other PBC fighters like Sebastian Fundora, Tim Zhu, et cetera. See what I mean? So it seems like uh, I'm not, I don't know if I could blame PBC for this, but being that Jamel Charlo is a PBC fighter and most likely advise him to do so, it just goes to show you that PBC do not fuck with Terrence Crawford and they don't want nothing to do with that man. So they do everything they can to block him from getting us some prestigious opportunities. That's just my opinion. That's how it looks to me. You know what I mean? Jordan Sherry says, never seen a sharper decline in a fighter stock than Jamel has after his performance against Canelo. It, yeah, man. It seems like Shakur is pretty much in that same boat as well. You know what I mean? Because it seemed like fucking Shakur Stevenson hit an all-time low, like, reputation-wise after the De Los Santos performance. It seems like he went from being, like, a really respected, 
a fighter who was looked at as, you know, the best out of the 130 and 140 pound division to having that performance and then being described as, you know, being scary, you know what I mean? And not being ready for tank and, and all types of shit, bro. It seems like his shit just plummeted down the drain in all honesty. But, uh, you know, Jamel Charlo, what made his situation so bad was that he was known as this all oh, lions only, all oh, lions forever. Oh, oh, I'm a dog. I'm a warrior. Oh. Talk crazy to everybody. Talk greasy to just about everybody he done fought. You know, before he had to pull out with that injury against Tim Zoo, he was talking greasy to Tim Zoo. You know what I mean? They was on a they was on a uh, live stream. They was on that Zoom meeting talking greasy, talking hella shit. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, he gets that deal with Canelo Alvarez. They doing the press conferences, and all of a sudden, he wants to do a rebrand. He not talking crazy to Canelo. He being real humble to himself, and you know he's keeping the trash talk to a minimum. And it's like, bro, what the fuck is this? This ain't true. He had an obscene amount of respect for Canelo Alvarez, man, and admitted that, you know, he idolized Canelo. He idolized Canelo, bro. He admitted that. So you already knew that mentally he was out of the fight and he ain't staying a motherfucking chance, man. And when he fought Canelo Alvarez, bro, he was on, uh, he was like on defense mode the entire time, just trying to survive. He said, uh, uh, you messy. G.A. May Zay says, Jamel wife, so fine. Well, yes, she is. Beautiful woman. Her name, like, Shy Rock. That's her name on Instagram, Shy Rock. Shout out to, shout out to the baby Shy. That's a beautiful woman right there. Polynesian woman. Beautiful. Definitely got a little crush on her for sure. You know what I mean? But, you know, she fuck with Jamel, so I'm going to leave that alone. Yo, Zay, you 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 messy, my brother. You you talking it. You talking. <laughs> oh my God. Silks. All right, let me move on from there. Cause Zay is they messy. Uh uh, he says Jamel the same age as Canelo. He said he look up to him. Bro, that's what I'm saying. It's like, bro, you acting like he the big homie and y'all the same age. Like, yo, like I don't be understanding these dudes sometimes, man. You talk greasy to all these people that got the same complexion as you. And then when you go up against this man who got the complexion for the protection, all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You trying to do a whole breed brand. And uh, come on, dog. You was a scary motherfucker, bro. I already knew them Charlos was pussy back when, like, you know, all them situations that happened with, like, Jerry Heard, you know, throwing a slap at them and nothing happened. They talked so greasy. They was talking greasy to Adrian Broner and Tank. Nothing happened. They just talk greasy and they don't do shit behind the scenes, bro. They just want to give you the impression that they tough, but they don't want to show you that they tough. You know what I'm saying? There's some people that's just tough inside the ring that they will only engage with you. Bro, do you know how many fighters, bro, I personally see and get hit outside the ring and they will not retaliate? A lot of these dudes be tough in the ring because it's a sport at the end of the day. They competing. But outside of the ring where, like, shit can really hit the fan, they become pacifists, bro. I've seen it happen, bro. Or if they do fight outside the ring, they don't fight nothing like they do in the ring. Can't fight for shit outside the ring. It, it should be mind-boggling to me. So as Bando said, Charlo's twins, just like Chihuahuas, that's a fact. They definitely be doing all that barking. You know what I mean? They want to give you the impression that they can hurt you. But them niggas ain't shit but ankle biters at the end of the day. Just run they fucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let, let's get into... Let's get into Tank and Shakur Stevenson, man. It seems like they beef, they beef is continuing <laughs> on social media. I think that they're still going at it, like as we speak. Let me see. Let's see what's going on. Javante Davis, you know, he obviously do the post and delete type shit. That's his style. You know what I mean, I think that's corny in all honesty. Well, let's see. Let's go back. He said, he said Shakur still fight like an amateur. He's soft and the fight back. <laughs> he said, you a bitch, little nigga. You not the top. You a top rank fighter that run the ranks. Your ass should be fighting on Thursday night faithfully. <laughs> he said, your ass should be fighting on Thursday night boxing faithfully after they play Andre Ward clips, bum. 
It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know what Andre Ward got to do with that, but whatever. He said, exactly. He asked a fucking bum. Somebody posted a video of him, like, you know, moving all around against uh, Nakatila and shit like that. Yo, so Javante Davis convinced, man. So we got to have this discussion. Do y'all really feel like Shakur Stevenson is what they make him up to be? Do you think that he's capable of beating Javante Davis? Because Javante Davis really feels like Shakur isn't what they claim he is. He could he call him a bum. Do he just do you think he just calling him that because you know that's his rival? Or do you think he has a strong case? Let me know real quick. Somebody grab something. Let me know what's going on, man. Is this competitive talk or what? Because when you check the old footage and they was cool, Javante was telling you that Shakur was nice. Tell him he was a bad motherfucker and all types of shit. Now that they not cool, seems like he switched up the approach. So what's really the truth? Is he nice? Is he not? Um, G.A. Maze, you said, you think Triple G duck word? Absolutely he did. And I'll tell you why. When Abel Sanchez was promoting Triple G, he said that Triple G could beat anybody from 154 to 168 pounds, right? That was what was going around for a long time, along with them saying that Triple G has a Mexican style, building up his Mexican fan base. They said that they'll fight anybody from 154 to 168 pounds. Now, I do remember at one point in time when Triple G was with HBO, he was trying to make two fights happen at 168. One of them was Carl Froch. Another one was uh, Chavez Jr. Those are two fights that he was heavily pursuing and was willing to move up to 168 to make the fight happen. Andre Ward gets word of this. He comes out and was like, yo, you're going to step into this division. You're the number one guy at 160. I'm the number one guy at 168. You had to see me. So I guess, you know, Triple G team did everything they could to make it seem like they was a scared of Ward and shit like that. So they offered Andre Ward a fight at a catch weight of 164 pounds. Facts. This is all shit that you could look up. Andre Ward said, no. Why the fuck would I do that? I'm a champion at 168. You said you was willing to go up to 68 to fight Chavez Jr. and Carl Frotch. I beat Carl Frotch. I'm at the top of 168. Why you requesting me to come down to 164, but you want to fight them at 68? Pussy. That's why. That's why. You see what I mean? Also, there was a situation where Andre Ward even disrespected Triple G and called him Little G and has showed the receipts necessary to prove that. Triple G's team had turned down an offer with the fight with Andre Ward within 15 minutes of the email being sent. These are not my words. This is stuff that you can look up on your own. So Triple G definitely ducked Andre Ward. You see what I mean? And Triple G has ducked plenty of other fighters, especially, you know, towards the later half of his career. You know, he didn't want to fight Ares Landy Lara. Ares Landy Lara did everything in his power to get that fight with Triple G, and Triple G refused to fight him. Demetrius Andre, another fighter Triple G ducked, didn't want no smoke with him when he was a champion in his division. Jamal Charlo, I believe they stripped uh, Triple G and gave the belt to Jamal Charlo with WBC belt. And shit, Jamal been holding on to that motherfucking belt ever since then. Canelo ducked Andre as well, that's a fact. Triple G, we'll see. Yep, that's a fact. But anyway, let's not get too far gone. So, yeah, man. At this point, man, I'm getting kind of sick of the back and forth, especially specifically with Shakur Stevenson, but uh, I'm sick of the back and forth on social media, man. These dudes be tweeting more than they be getting fight dates. You feel what I mean? They haven't even confirmed Javante Davis and Frank Martin's fight date yet. Like, did they even post it? Like, I hear, like, I hear what the fighters are saying. You know what I mean? Like, David Benavidez is like, yeah, I'm fighting on the undercard, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, they're going to have this person on the undercard. All right, that sounds good. But let me check Premier Boxing. Let me see if I – maybe I missed it. I don't know. I'm a busy man. I don't know. Let me see. I see the undercard for Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia on here. I don't see a date for Canelo – for Javante Davis and Frank Martin. I don't see it. So what the hell is going on? 
Y'all niggas keep talking. You say you got a six to seven fight plan and Shakur is in the plan. All right, well, what's going on with your first fight? It's supposed to be Frank Martin. We've been waiting on the fight day. We keep hearing all these rumors, all these types of different confirmations from all these different fighters. How about getting actual confirmation from the network that's actually making the fight happen? What's going on? Y'all doing all this talking. Y'all doing all this typing. Y'all doing all this beefing. But there's no fight days going on. Shakur Stevenson, he's supposed to be fighting Ardo Haratunyan or whatever the fuck his name is. Why the fuck are you even engaged in speaking of Javante Davis right now if you already got a date and a fucking opponent in front of you? Stop talking like this fight could happen next when you already got something lined up. Like, right, bro, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit, bro. Clarissa says, it's good to be a virtual fight in the metaverse. Man, listen, I'm trying to see blood. I'm trying to see niggas get hurt. I want to see who the truth and who not the truth. You know what I mean? I don't know if the metaverse can help me with that. But I know what can help me with that. A real motherfucking fight in a boxing ring. And I would love to see Javante Davis versus Shakur Stevenson on the East Coast. Let's see that shit in New York. Let's let that shit happen. That shit a sellout. Shakur from down Newark. Javante Davis from out Baltimore. Put it in a neutral location that's that's um, not too far from neither one of them guys. Absolute sellout. Absolute sellout. So that's why I'm at with it. I'm sick of hearing people beefing and talking and saying that they will beat this person and that person, bro. It's about that time that niggas just show me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like like J. Cole said, you got to see it to believe it. I got to see it to believe it. You can only talk so much. I, I'm not convinced off words, my nigga. I done been in the boxing game a long time. But I heard people say a whole lot of shit. And then when they step in there, they not able to follow through on what they said. So for real, for real, if you don't plan on fighting this man anytime soon, y'all not friends. Stop talking to each other, man. Stop talking to each other, dog. Because what's going to happen is <clears throat> Javante Davis talking all greasy right now. He got an opponent lined up and all this shit. But then as soon as this fight day is over, he quiet his shit somewhere. G.A. May uh, Zay says, "Core should have fought more to tie That's a fact. I said that. I had put out a video and was like, yo, bro, who the fuck is uh, Haratunyan, he lost to Frank Martin. So you talking shit about Frank Martin, right? You talking about how he ducked you and all that shit. Meanwhile, you about to fight the nigga that he beat. And Haratunyan, I don't even know if I'm saying his last name right, but regardless, that man has not event. He has not bounced back from that loss since then. And then you're about to fight a man. You about to fight this man. You about to fight somebody coming off of a loss, bro. You're too top tier of a fighter to be fighting somebody who just came off of a loss. Mordecai just won a couple weeks ago. Fight him. Fight him, bro. Tiafimo was acting like he was going to fight more than Taya. All of a sudden, you know what I mean? They said Steve Claggett. Now Tiafimo talking about he don't got an opponent. So what the fuck is going on? I understand that Shakur don't make his fights old school, but he can accept and decline. He can do that. Especially if you got one fight left on your contract. You have a say-so on who you fight. And, and I already know how this promotional shit goes. All right, he's not his own promoter, so he doesn't call the shots on who the hell's presented to him. However, he can request some things, and they can appease him, especially if the other, especially if the guy who he's talking about or requesting is from the same promotional state and is willing to take the fight. I don't understand what you wrote right there. But if you Shakur Stevenson, you can make requests. You see what I mean? You can make requests. I've seen it happen. I've seen fighters that weren't as popular as Shakur Stevenson make requests, and they follow through with, with, with what they requested, or at least attempted to. Core needs a positive performance after his last outing. It's a fact. 
I don't think Shakur could, t- could afford to take any more damage to his career than what he currently has, bro. They will give him that fighter unless he resigns. I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, Ty Reagan, them new Terrence Crawford wasn't going to resign, but they still gave him a big fight with Sean Porter. I mean, they could give him, and that's a fighter that's not even within their promotional stable. Still made a big fight happen. Shakur could get a meaningful fight. A Singh says, how do you think Boots would do against a prime Kell Brook? Um, I think he'll do pretty well with Kell Brook. Kell Brook got a pretty good pull counter with his jab and shit like that. He's solid. You know what I mean? He's strong. He's tough. But he can be broke. He can be broke. And I think the hand speed, the athleticism of Boots, you know what I mean? And, and the overall, just uh, I think he'll accumulate a lot of damage on Kell Brook. I think that I think the speed will really pick him off. I think he'll hurt Kell Brook. I think he'll stop him. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if if uh Kell Brook got the durability to deep to uh Texas said uh, Kel showed how to be the athletic, active, heavy puncher in that Porter fight. Well, Porter's not a heavy puncher, so I don't know who you're referring to. Sean Porter's not a heavy puncher. But I see what you're saying, though. But what he pretty much did, was, he he it was a lot of excessive holding with that Porter fight. That man held on to Porter for dear life, but, you know, he landed, you know, he landed some clean, effective shots on on Porter and shit like that. So I, he he won, you know, doubt about it. But I mean, yeah, we can agree to disagree. We we can. Yeah, that's the. That, I think that stood out the most. That stood out the most. He was beating Porter to the punch, and you know, as soon as Porter was seen to get his offense off, he would run into a straight shot. He would run into a jab, whatever the case is. And when whenever Porter was trying to get his offense off, Kel Brook made it his business to tie him up. You know what I mean? So he did what he needed to do. He did what he needed to do. He said Shakur gonna beat Haratunyan like he did Yoshino. Shakur need to take a meaningful fight afterwards. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Maybe it is a situation, maybe old school, right? Where you know they top rank knows that Shakur not gonna re-sign with them, so they're gonna give him a shitty opponent to walk out the door with. That like he's not gonna get much credit for. It. You know what I mean? But if he's a free agent, you know what I mean, he definitely gotta make the best decision possible on who he's gonna go with next and then just build from there, bro. He's going to have to build. Yo, Silks, you, you messy, bro. What's going on? R. Kelly versus Diddy, who you got? And what? I got them and what? What are you talking about? Like, what type of contest are you talking about? You talking about them boxing? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Shit, I don't know. Silks wilding. I don't know what he talking about. Shout out to the 46 people that's in the building, man. We got 46 people in the building. He over here trying to get me to talk about, you know, R. Kelly versus P. Diddy. That's some wild shit. Those some nasty men right there. No gloves. Bro, what is you talking about? Uh, 12 around the box and no gloves. Nigga, I don't know. I'm going to say that probably P. Diddy going to get him because I think P. Diddy more, more of like a violent dude. I don't know. I don't know R. Kelly for being a violent dude. I don't know for him swinging on people and shit like that. I know P. Diddy. P. Diddy got fights. He he fought. I think he slapped J. Cole and all types of shit. He got into a scuffle with 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 J. Cole and shit. Like P. Diddy, quick to pop off.
There was a rumor that Cole, like, low-key put hands on P. Diddy, though. That's what I heard, though. I don't know, though. I wasn't there, obviously. But I heard J. Cole was defending Kendrick because P. Diddy had a had a uh, problem with uh, Kendrick Lamar having that King of New York uh, line on that control verse. Who, who, who you take off on? Texas, who who he taking off on? Who did he taking off on? Not on me. Shit. Oh, okay. You saying in general? Shit. You motherfucker, man, I swing my way. I slip that shit. Cleaning, real shit. But uh, R. R. Kelly versus P. Diddy is crazy though, for sure. <laughs> he said, "I seen Drake hit the pads. Kendrick might beat him, even though he's a lightweight." Have y'all seen Kendrick Lamar uh hit the pads? He look a lot better than uh, Drake does on the pads. I'll show y'all. Let me see if I can find that shit. I seen Kendrick Lamar, and I seen it not too long ago, too. And I was like, yo, he's actually, he, he seems pretty fluid. He don't look bad at all. But, Ken, but uh, Drake, man, I mean, do y'all, like, look at Drake. Do you really think he has any experience with fighting? Like, come on, man. All right, this is it right here. Hold on. This is a quick clip. Kendrick Lamar, he he's pretty fluid with his combinations and stuff. He looked nice and loose paws. He he looked like um like he's comfortable. You know what I mean? <laughs> he look like all you know what I mean? Look, that's not bad. Oh, right around each other. He's not snapping his head all the way out. Oh. I've seen a lot worse. Hell yeah. I've seen a it's lot worse. Good work right there. Oh, she showing some movement. Yeah. Got some hand speed. Not bad, bro. I've seen worse. I'm telling you. Now let's look at Drake on the pads. <laughs> oh, look at that shit over there. I would just say this, bro. bro. Yo, these pad masters, bro. I guarantee you that dude's a nobody in box. I'm gonna tell you this. Um, <clears throat> these pad masters be making a shit ton of money and be giving these celebrities the impression that they know boxing. Um, when he's throwing the shots to make Drake slip, he's literally just touching his shoulders. He's not making him take his head off the line or nothing like that. I don't care. They just like, oh. Drake look like he got some pop on that right hand, though. This nigga is jerking his head, pause, when he's throwing the jab. He like... <laughs> oh, my God. That boy got a lot to learn, bro. Wow. Never seen nobody like <laughs> bad John. Bro, where these pad men come from? Nigga, I don't know. I don't know, bro. I think they, they see a couple videos online, they practice the pads, and then they certify USA boxing coaches. I don't know. I've seen I've seen videos of Anthony Davis boxing. Terrible. Terrible. I've seen Damian Lillard though. He don't look bad. He look like he know a little bit. I heard Justin Bieber could box. I heard Justin Bieber could box. The 
the dude from Ten Goose Gym said that Justin Bieber could hold his hands. He all right. Um, he was uh, Ricky Funes said that shit. But you know who was sharp on the low from what I heard? Well, there was a few. They said 50 Cent was nice. They said LL Cool J was nice. And um, damn, uh, Dame Dash. They said Dame Dash was really nice at boxing. You said Chris Brown could box? I ain't even surprised, bro. Chris Brown could do every motherfucking thing, bro. Ain't too much that motherfucker can do. He one of them type dudes that, like, he could get naturally good at something. Like, he don't really need to practice it. Just real athletic dude, bro. So, I, I, you know, that's not hard to believe. Yeah, 50 dip box as a team. Big Pun used to box. Yo, that's crazy. I was thinking that, but I wasn't going to say it. But, yeah, Big Pun, yeah, he used to box. I heard that too. I mean, he Puerto Rican and he from where was he from? Uh, where was Big Pun from? The Bronx. Kind of Fat Joe from there. Let me see. I don't even know where he from. I know he got a mural in the Bronx, but uh, <clears throat> Marky Mark, you talking about Mark Wahlberg? DDG used to box, for real? I didn't know that. Yo, a lot of these dudes, a lot of these dudes use boxing during the off season. Like I used to train uh, players for the Philadelphia Eagles during their off season and shit. Boxing is the best workout to keep them in shape, bro. And I've heard all like all type of level athletes speak on this. Um, they say that no boxing workout, no no workout gets them more tired than a boxing workout. I hear that from everybody. I, I even hear that from MMA fighters. Man, I would love to get on one of those influencer boxer cards, man. Her little dirt could box. I seen him training with Coach Mustafa um, out in Atlanta in Decatur. So that ain't hard to believe. Coach Mustafa, he 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 knows his boxing. Martin Lawrence fighting the gloves. Yo, I heard that before. I think my step pop told me that shit. And I was like, you lying. And I had looked it up and I was like, oh shit. Yo, but if you ever watch like his skits, like he had like certain skits on Martin where like he'd be squaring up and shit. And he looked like real fluid and shit. And I remember one time I was like, yo, he looked like he actually got a little bit of experience. Like he was like playing around, just doing like some physical comedy type shit. And I was like, yo, he looked like he really know, like he he like he understand like movement pretty well and shit. I don't know, he looked like he got some experience and come to find out he did. Shaq is good, but he's slow. I remember Shaq did the verses and I think he boxed Oscar De La Hoya. Um, and I think he boxed Shane Mosley. Yo, you out of pocket. Peanut Live 215 had a sparring session with Danny Garcia. Bro, Peanut Live 215 had North Philly in a chokehold at one point, bro. Like, we was really looking forward to seeing, you know, his vlogs on the daily, bro. That's sad that they fell off, man. They could have really did something. Forgot the ex. Actually, what's your thoughts on Mack Truck? Used to be with Mustafa, but now with Bozy and them. Um, you're talking about Dakari Scott. I've been watching him for a while, even back when he was with Mustafa. And, you know, he's an undersized heavyweight, but he got skills. Um, you know, he got a good jab. He got some power, too. He's an intelligent fighter. He got potential. But the problem is, is he's going to have, like, he, he could do well with certain type of fighters and stuff like that. But uh, when he gets to the elite level, he's going to be in trouble, man. 
You know what I mean? Uh, I understand he's a heavyweight, but he's very undersized. Like, can you imagine the Kari Scott in there with Daniel Dubois or somebody like that? Or, you know, uh, a big baby Miller? I don't know if he'll be able to deal with dudes um, who are that big. You see what I mean? But I do remember that, you know, Mack Truck was trying to lose some weight or whatever, and he said that he didn't feel like himself. Like, he was trying to get his weight down. He was trying to cut some of that fat off. But, you know... He underperformed. I think he fought like Tommy Morrison's son and got stopped. You feel me? So, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's talented, but I think he's in a pretty tough situation because he is undersized. You know what I mean? And not everybody got the ability to overcome, like, size advantages like Mike Tyson and shit. So, I don't know. Uh, Tisha Campbell supposedly had hands too. There's a video, there's an old video of her hitting the pads. This is the thing though, like people look good on the pads and shit, but that don't necessarily mean that, you know what I mean, you got hands. But I understand what you're saying, like she she coordinated or whatever. Yeah, Gina or Martin, she was bad as hell. Super bad. Shit, I used to, I don't know how y'all feel, but shit, I used to think Pam used to look good too, shit. I don't know. Pam, Pam, I don't know. Like, Martin used to always call her ugly and shit, but there was some episodes I was like, yo, Pam look good. <laughs> My boy Jamil said Gina got hands. Anthony Pettis got on Roy Jones' ass in that exhibition. <laughs> no homo. I mean, bro, Roy... Roy is nowhere near what he used to be, man. So at this point, it's like, do you even really get credit for beating up on Roy or even getting off on Roy? It's like, it's, it's a joke at this point, man. I don't know why he keep fighting. I don't know if he needs to check. I don't know what it is, but, you know, Roy just need to leave that shit alone. I like the evil chick of Family Matters that passed away. Who you talking about? I watch Family Matters. But who, who's the evil chick? Martin Raise Your Generation. Bro, I don't watch every episode of Martin. There ain't not one episode of Martin I didn't watch. My favorite show is Dragonfly Jones. Dragonfly Jones was my guy. That should never get old. Not for me. You said 140 years old. Let me see what you're talking about. Man, all those like family type TV shows always had one beautiful woman on there or multiple. Like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, bro. Bro. I feel like uh, Hillary used to turn me off because she was like an airhead, but she was pretty too. But um, <laughs> I was, I used to stare at this girl all the time, bro. Ashley, oh my God. I used to have a, man, I had crushes on everybody, bro. I used to just be in my bag. But Ashley on Fresh Prince of Bel Air, she used to have my attention for sure. You said Martin don't look right in the new Bad Boys trailer. I mean, he older, man. He older. He he he. he, he I mean, he a round motherfucker. I don't know if you talking about fat, but family matters. Let's see what you talking about. Are you talking about I don't know who you're referring to, man. You got you gotta show me the name.
You're not talking about Laura, right? Tierra Marie. Oh, yeah. Myra Monkhouse. All right, let me check out. Because I don't be knowing their real name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she the truth. She she passed away? Oh, the stalker girlfriend, Urkel. Okay. Oh, wow. She had a rare stomach cancer, man. That's sad, bro. That's a beautiful woman right there. Damn, man. Steve crazy as shit for curving her. He all his damn mind. Oh, my God. Oh, man. That's sad, bro. You know who, you know who I, you know who I was low-key in love with, bro? Y'all watch Malibu's Most Wanted? <laughs> Regina Hall on there, bro. Oh my God. Regina Hall, Malibu's most wanted, bro. My dad used to have like DVDs, bro. She was so fine. Like that shit, Regina Hall is just ridiculous, bro. Like, come on, bro. Regina Hall always had it for me. Wow. Tierra Marie, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I know the video you're talking about, too. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, well, there's a GameCube and there's a Dreamcast. I said, I got GameCast, nigga, damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, Regina Hall, bro. I'm getting back memories with this shit. That was a beautiful woman, bro. Look, look, just, just like take a look at her, bro. And she still look good to this day. She still look good to this day. Look at that woman, bro. <sighs> Crazy. 2003, I was only five years old, bro. Jesus Christ. She was the motherfucking truth, boy. <laughs> Rosie Perez, you got these motherfucking these. Rosie Perez, yeah. Mm hmm. Um, Christina Milian, I had a huge crush on growing up. Eve, y'all probably don't rock with Eve all like that, but I loved Eve, bro. I had the biggest crush on Eve, too. She still look all right. She still look good. I ain't like the short like cut that she had, but when she's when she used to have the long hair and shit like that. And she from Philly too. She got a billionaire husband now, so she she cool. She don't gotta do shit, but yeah. Oh man, you know who 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 I still be crushing on to this day, bro. Who I still crush on to this day, uh, Kelly Rowland. To this day, Nia Long, facts. Bro, it's a bunch of them, bro. Aaliyah. Aaliyah, she was she she was easy, but you know what I mean, RIP to her. She was easy work, but you know what I mean? You said RIP Nip, but Lauren was was nigga, she's still fine as hell. Still. It says Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez, yeah. Selena was, Selena was, she's still nice. But she got lupus, so like she fluctuate in weight and shit, man. It's unfortunate, but yeah. Christina Milian was my baby. Uh, my teenage years, Karuchi. Love Karuchi. Karuchi was the one for me. Yeah, Karuchi was fine, bro. Sheesh. Like, take a look at her, bro. Look. 
We don't know. We not even talking about boxing no more. But fuck it. I spoke about everything I needed to speak about. Karuchi. I see why Chris Brown done made a million songs about her. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, you fucked up big on that one, my brother. You could have locked that down. Yeah. And Karuchi and Christina Million, uh, they like best friends. Look, best friends. Yeah, I need that. God damn. Some beautiful women right there. But anyway, yeah, man. So who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Kelly Rowland. Always love Kelly Rowland, bro. I could never, like, let that go. But currently, like today, bro, like today, I don't know if y'all know her, bro, but her name, uh, ooh, Sierra, bro. <laughs> Yo, y'all bring it back memories, bro. She got a song. No, Kelly Rowland still like that. She still like that. Let me show y'all. Let me show y'all Kelly Rowland, bro. She had a yo. She put up a post like a couple months ago, bro. Let me show y'all this shit, bro. Let's see if she still got it up because she was showing out, bro. She was showing the fuck off, but she happily married. You know what I mean? So I guess that's what's up. Like, I guess. Look at this. She got the see-through shit, bro. Look. She wildin'. But I'm supporting that. Fuck you, me. <laughs> ah. You know what I'm saying? She still look good. Ain't shit changed about Kelly. She aging like wine out this motherfucker, boy. Oh man, see the truth. See the truth with and without makeup. You said Alicia Key, Janae, yeah, Janae, Janae, my type, teach, yeah, for sure. Koi, Koi, right? She, she look good. She pretty. She ain't the top of my list, but you know who number one on my list right now? Oh, yo, with Sierra, bro. I'm gonna tell y'all this, bro. That song that she got, what's that shit called? I think it's called Promise. I fell in love with her just by hearing that goddamn song. I'm trying to tell you, bro. On Promise, listen to them lyrics, bro. It's like everything a nigga want to hear. My girl, go, I bought tickets for my girl to go watch Janae. She, fuck, she a big fan of Janae. Nah, Beyonce bad. Don't get it fucked up. I don't know. I just gravitated towards more Kelly. Uh, I gravitated towards uh, Kelly more. But Sierra, she's man. Russell, Russell got a good John with him. Good John with him. Future fucked that up too. You can tell he still feel a way about that situation. No, nah, I didn't mention Holly Berry, but Holly Berry definitely one of the ones. Um, oh, yeah. Yo, currently today, bro, I'm, I'm a grown-ass man, bro. I don't got no questions. It's just like, if I fuck with you, I fuck with you type shit. But the girl today, bro, that, like, bro, I be watching her constantly, and she always on my timeline and shit. Is <laughs> this girl right here, bro. Tyler, bro. Tyler is certified bad. That's my type. I love the the small, pretty faced women, bro. Like I just, I don't know. Like Tyler is just one of them ones, bro. She just one of them ones. When she did that, she did that podcast with Kai Sinat. Bro, I was stuck on fucking stupid. Oh, there it go right here. Look, she just keep popping up on my timeline, bro. Look. I'm so sorry. That, that, the little group on my wrist is slowly. The accent, too. I'm 
YouTube. Sorry, bro. She she the top. She at the top of my list today. She got good music too. Mariah the scientist. She nice. I'm South African dog. Mm -hmm. Mariah the scientist. She not bad. She looked like a typical Rican John from Philly, though. I don't know what her ethnicity is, but I know a few Ricans in Philly that look just like her. Yeah, she tough. Algorithms got me. That's a fact. I'm trying to tell you, if I refresh this John, bro, it's going to be majority Tyler stuff, bro. Look, like, <laughs> look, Just look at that. Look how many Tyler Jones come up. I'm boxing. <laughs> Yeah, Mariah to tell. You said Glorilla is chopped. Well, she's done some things to improve how she looks. I know we all off topic, man. It's cool, man. We we touched on everything we need to touch on. It's cool, bro. Now we just got to wait. LMA, she nice, though. We just got to wait until, you know, these fights happen. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to go back to the topic, just rewind back a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, Glorilla, she, I don't know. She, she, she attractive to me. Um, I don't know. I like her confidence. I like how the way she, I like how the way she carry herself. But uh, I like how the way she, um, oh, Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose, definitely. She, she's something nice to look at, but nah, Cassie, Jordan, that's a good John, bro. Y'all, yo, y'all, y'all got some, yeah, yeah I'm saying, y'all know what y'all talking about. Meg the Stallion. Yeah, I'm a fan of Meg. I don't like which I don't like her as a person. I think she a fraud for real, for real. But uh nah, sexy red definitely ain't one of them ones. Hell no. Georgia Smith, she top tier. Snow Allegra, she top tier. Lotto. They be hating on her, bro, because she got a white mom or whatever. Lotto is the fucking truth, bro. Uh Ice Spice. I think she regular in all honesty, but I'm a fan of when she dances. You know what I'm saying? I'm a fan of how the way she dance. You know what I mean? Bilotto. What? This nigga said he's to send her let he's to send Nicki Minaj letters on MySpace. God damn. You think Ice Spice look like she stink? No, oh, they ain't. I don't get that impression from her. Man, don't fuck up my damn. Don't make me start thinking about that shit. That's crazy. Spice overrated. She your average Dominican. Ain't too many Dominicans in Philly that look like Ice Spice, though. Not in Philly. A lot of uh, Dominicans in Philly, they don't even look like Ice Spice. They usually be darker. Coco Jones. Young Jada Pink and not not this alopecia bitch. You know what I'm saying? And she she an ugly person inside too. She a weirdo. She got my man Will Smith out here looking bad. Will Smith make Philly look bad, bro. The niggas who represent Philly right now make us look bad. Queen Latifah, she a beautiful woman. She ain't my type, but there's a market for her though. I don't think Queen Latifah ugly. I don't think Queen Latifah ugly at all. She does not for me. You know what I'm saying? There's a market for her though. There's niggas that that uh get at her, bro. Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea, bro. She slept on. Amber Rose, yeah, she from Philly. She, she, man, she was popping off in the city way before Kanye picked up. Megan Good, mm -hmm. Sade, 
Drake be on her dick. He got her tatted and all. Yeah, Iggy Azalea, she she one of them ones, bro. I seen her OnlyFans. That shit leaked on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't rock with Black China. I don't like how she look. There's somebody else that I think. Yeah, what y'all think about uh what y'all think about Tiana Taylor? Y'all think she pretty? Bro, Lil Kim before the surgery was top tier, bro. I don't know why the fuck she did that. She was a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, Lil Kim was the truth, bro. When I seen them before pictures of her, I'm like, bro, why the fuck would she do that? Tiana, who you talking about? Who you talking about, Ralph? Oh, Tiana Taylor. I don't like Tiana Taylor, bro. I think she, I think, she, I don't know. She not attractive to me at all. She like, she look weird in the face, bro. Like, I don't know. Snigger say, young M.A. <laughs> Did this nigga say young M.A.? Yo, y'all niggas be fucking clowning, bro. This nigga's... <laughs> oh, my God. I'm trying not to laugh. I got... A girl sleeping in the other room. I ain't trying to die. This thing crazy. This nigga say young and made, bro. Gwen Stefani and Nelly. Fatardo. Fatardo, whatever the hell name is. I know what you're talking about. Young and made, you shot the fuck out, bro. You crazy as shit. Yo, there was this one nigga that said, who the fuck told... I think the boy Daylight, the boy who was just featured on J. Cole last project, nigga said he will fuck Young M.A. and shit, that she thick. And that shit had Young M.A. pissed off, bro. That shit was hilarious, bro. Like, Young M.A. want to prove to people that she a man so bad. Bro, like, no, you will never be that. Like, cut it out. You be trying to have that, that deep voice. And, bro, you know you got a feminine voice, bitch. Cut it out. Fuck out of here. Jessica Alba, yes. Yes. She always been bad. And she older now. How old is Jessica Alba right now? She got to be in her 40s. Oh, yeah, Jessica Alba is slept on, my brother. Dej Loaf. Yeah. Damn, that's she she be playing a low key, but yeah, Days Low. I like Days Low. She's not at the top of my list, but I rock with her. Young MA is a woman, bro. You ain't know that. They like be saying some wild shit. He followed me on Twitter. Cause I used to be a huge battle rap fan back in the day. There's a few people that follow me on, on on social media, and I'm I don't even know how they follow me. Like um, Charleston White follows me on on uh, Instagram, and I have no idea why. Southpaw wife, what? What are you talking about? You mean you mean Messi Zay? Who from Dallas? You talking about Ashanti back in the day, nigga? How about Ashanti right now? 
Shit, Nelly, Nelly, Nelly ain't Nelly making sure he ain't leaving no room. Erica Badu, hell yeah, ain't she thick as fuck? But uh yeah, Charleston White. Yeah, he from Dallas. Yeah, yeah, he from Dallas. He from Fort Worth, I think. Kiki Palmer, she all right. I don't like I don't like her as a person. I don't like how the way she be talking and shit, but she all right. Do you think Charleston cracked Britney Runner? I think if he did, he would have said it. I don't think so. I think she was just drunk and was just out of pocket. Shanti is bad. Nelly put a baby in her, and he just got engaged with her. He know what he doing. What, Brittany Renner, bro? I've been on Brittany Renner for years before she popped off, bro. I been knew she was bad. I used to follow her in high school. I used to go on all her lives and all that. <laughs> yeah, Brittany Renner was definitely, she definitely eligible. Mm-hmm. You said they don't make them like back in the day anymore. That's some, bro. That's some beautiful women in, in, in the industry right now. Shanti bad though. That's a fact. Oh yeah, teach. She definitely not wifey material. We know that. You gotta know how to separate them. Like a Mike Epps said, you got to know when to hit them. You got to know when to split them. Mm -hmm. Tyra Banks. I forget, man, let me see what she looked like right now. So when she was on America's Next Top Model, I don't know. She, she got, she all right. She all right. She 50. Wow. In that case, she looked good for 50. She taking care of herself. Yeah, she looked older in this picture, though. Yeah, she definitely looked older. Hold up. Uh, she all right. She all right. In her prime, she was all right. Bow Wow had her in the bag, though. Bow Wow little ass had her in the bag. But uh, yeah, there's some beautiful women out here, bro. Don't don't get it mistaken. These uh, I, I know y'all be trying to downplay Ice Spice and shit. Ice Spice, she 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 a pretty John. Y'all mean to tell? Uh, put it this way, y'all saying she overrated? She piped up, bro. If you were in high school, right? And y'all like sitting in the classroom. There's 10, 15 women in the class. You think Ice Spice not going to stand up? Shit. I'd have been right at her. I'd have been right at her. Especially how the way she looked in high school. Did y'all see that? Lauren London is a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Wow, did have a lot of them. That little motherfucker... Was getting groovy in these streets. Definitely getting groovy in these streets. Carrie Hilson slept on. I'm trying to think of one. Somebody said salons already. They gotta be one we not talking about. Lala, you said Carmelo's wife. Yeah, she nice. She freaking too, I think. Mm -hmm. What do y'all um? 
How about Angela Yee? I used to look at her and I'm like, yo, she she fine. I used to see her in like some interviews and I'm like, yo, she all right. But I don't know. She be hit or miss sometimes. But when I used to see her on the breakfast club sometimes, I'm like, yo, she all right. She a little pretty, John. But sometimes she look a little funny. Oh, I don't be knowing. <laughs> Zay said mid. <laughs> He said mid. That's crazy. Damn. Yeah, Doja Cat. Before she started doing, being on that weird shit, she was fine too. She had a fat ass too. Something to hit and I pop out with. I don't know. Angela E seemed like she hella submissive, bro. She, I don't know. That's a big quality for me, bro. If you, if you submissive, you know what I mean? And you ladylike and you you know how to like communicate and shit like that. I could rock with you. It'd be that loud ratchet, you know what I mean? In control of, not in control of your emotions type shit that deter me. As soon as you start showing some ratchet, toxic shit, bro, I'm gone. I'm gone. I don't give a fuck what we got going on, bro. That shit dead. Submissive is a beautiful trait. A beautiful trait. You know how to lead, and you got a submissive woman, you set, nigga. Bro, this past experiences I had where it was like, bro, I used to dread going home because I knew it was going to be some bullshit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, now I come home, I'll be in peace. I get, nigga. We, uh, I brought up Salon. She beautiful. Kelly's back. Uh, you talking about Nas, baby mom. Ain't she bald now? Who the fuck bald? Women are made to be submissive, but they women, but they women are changing for the worst. Yeah, it's like the people, like the roles are changing. Now you're seeing like men, you know, behave like women. And you know, bro, I'll be hearing men talk about, man, why she don't just come and talk to me? Like, nigga, if you don't go over there and bust a move, you soft-ass nigga. Social media. Social media made these niggas scared. Yo, Angela Bassett, bro. Yeah, and I'm, bro, I'm about as masculine as they come. You know what I'm saying? I like to, like, be braggadocious or nothing, but I'm just saying, like, I'm, I ain't, I ain't got no bitch in me. You see what I mean? Uh, when I... Once I sense that a woman has some type of masculine energy, bro, I'm done. Like, there's been women that I've approached in the past. You know, they beautiful women or whatever. You get to talking to them, you know what I mean? Just try to, like, pick their brain, see where they coming from, whether they a slider. You know what I mean? Or they, like, like good girl type quality shit. And once I just get the small impression that you want some masculine shit, bro, it's a wrap. It's hard to come back from that. Uh, sweetie, sweetie, bad. Bad. Yeah. I think Sweetie fucking with like 21 Savage now or some shit like that. I think. What is that Lotto? I don't know who Lotto fucking with. I don't know, bro. These girls, I don't mean, I don't, it'd be hard for me to keep up with them. But yeah, bro, it's like it, genders are like the gender rules are reversed nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we see a lot of women leading. They households now. You know what I mean? Um, and because they, they go to work and they have jobs and some of them be getting paid more than they niggas do, they feel like they could talk to niggas however they want. You know what I mean? I think a lot of these feminists out here, you know what I mean? I think a lot of these feminists are like anti, you know, masculinity in all honesty. You see what I mean? Um, a lot of these feminists be talking about equality for women and shit like that. They won't even tune into a WNBA game. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't know. I just be, I don't know, bro. It's a whole lot of shit. It's a whole lot of debates on that. But me personally, what I prefer, a woman that's not masculine, a woman that's ladylike, submissive, cooperative. Cooperative is a big thing for me too. You know what I'm saying? 
got to be cooperative. If you're not cooperative and you, you, uh, you know what I mean, you got a lot of uh, clap back in you or you just uh, being combative all the time, I ain't got the time for that shit. I'm a busy motherfucker, bro. I'm successful at what I do. I'm not settling for no bullshit. Because, you know what I mean? I've seen how the way my dad was moving out here. That one, of, one of the main things that motherfucker taught me, I mean, there's plenty of them. You might be upset about one for a little bit, but, you know what I mean? That's the reality of the situation, bro. I'm replaceable. You replaceable. She replaceable. Everybody replaceable. Now they could be they they could be arrogant and be like, oh, I can't be replaced. Oh, ain't nobody, go bro. There's somebody that could do what you do, and could probably do it even better. I'm humble enough to know that. I'm confident enough to know that. You know what I mean? I bring a lot to the table, and I'm different in a way. But at the same time, I'm humble enough to know that. Uh, you know, I'm not the only one that's capable of doing it. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, and there's a lot, bro. How many of these bitches with BBLs and shit that's walking around right now got a wedding ring on? How many of these combative women do you know? The one that's out here pumping all types of masculine type energy, and how many of them do you know that's married? Not engaged, married. Because a lot of these women be getting engaged, but they don't never get married. And if they do get married, they divorce them within that same year. Bro, narcissism is rampant in women nowadays, bro. Yeah, bro. It's like the society that we currently in right now, it's like women lack accountability, bro, or they refuse to take on accountability. Do you know how relieved I was when I was talking to my woman and um she actually took accountability for like a, you know, an inner like a like an argument we had, bro. That shit caught me off guard. I was like, what the fuck cuz nowadays it's like you wrong, you wrong, you wrong. And some women be so good with being narcissists that you could be in an argument with them and they'd be totally wrong. But how the way they move and how the way they act, you looking at yourself like, damn, like, why do I keep fucking up? Both times, it's not even you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done been through that shit, bro. I done been through situations where, you know what I mean? Like, it was always something. It was always something. You give them what they want and they just asking for more. You know what I mean? You you be, they be like, yo, I want you to do this. You do that, then they'll find something else to complain about. They never satisfy with what you do. They just want to hold on you. And whenever you got in a disagreement with them, they always made you feel bad for it. If you ain't follow through with what they wanted you to do, they'll make you feel bad for it. It was just constant guilt tripping. And you know, I try my best to be the best for my significant other, my partner. So I'm always thinking about how I could be better. You know what I mean? And I was never. I was never applauded for anything that I did. Not that I'm looking for it anyway, but it do feel good to get some type of, you know, recognition sometimes. You know what I mean? At least I, that's how I feel. And I feel like a lot of men feel like that too. We working our ass off. We provide, we provide for our families. Sometimes it's good to know that people seeing it, they recognizing it and they saluting you for it. Never got saluted for what the fuck I was doing. None of that type shit, bro. None of that type shit. You know what I mean? But I was always, I, I was never told anything positive. I was always told shit that I did wrong or I wasn't doing enough of. And that's what let me know. You know what's crazy though? I didn't know I was dealing with a narcissist until I started speaking to other people. That's how good, that's how bad it was, bro. Like I was being controlled so like crazy that I didn't even know what the fuck was going on around me. And I like to think of myself as like a smart person. You know what I mean? But Bro, I was I fell victim to that shit. Heavy. I started talking to other people and they like, yo, bro, you know that's like that's not normal, right? Like you. My coworker from my job, she's like, you know, you know what's going on right now, right? Like you know what you a part of right now, right? You falling victim to a narcissist. Once they open my eyes to that, then I start realizing all the shit. I'm like, damn, this shit really is happening. And that's when I just took myself up out that situation, man. That's why 
it's good to talk. It's good to, you know, speak about what's going on in your life and just venting to other people because they can give you a perspective that you don't even see. And the best thing I did was remove myself from the situation. Now, you know, it do suck, you know what I mean? Because my son isn't going to be able to um, experience us living in the same household. Uh, that shit hurt for a while, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. That shit, that shit killed me for a very long time. Um, so that's why I'm doing my best to, you know, I'm gonna have to get this man. I'm gonna have to get my kid, my son, with an amount of apologies for that. But you know, I gotta prioritize my mental health. I gotta prioritize my happiness. You feel what I mean? And I felt like. Neither one of them was there when I was in that situation, so I had to do what's best for me. And you know, that's not something he gonna recognize or realize it, uh, realize it being valid. You know, right now he's ten months old. He don't understand what's going on. He don't even understand life yet. But you know, he not gonna understand it within the first five years. Maybe not the first ten years. Maybe not the first fifteen years. But when he grows into an adult, um, and he's and he experiences some things, he gonna understand. Do I think therapy helps? I think so. I think so. I think that men came up in a society where there's a stigma that therapy doesn't help or they don't need therapy. I think therapy could really uh, help you figure out exactly who you are as a person, uh, what your flaws are, and can help you go down a path to self-improvement. That's what I think. Dog, yo, Jordan, you got this, like, I understand what you're saying, because I had a good perception of myself where, like, you know, I, I, I peep everything, and I'm I'm real observant, and, you know, I pick up uh, on people's character real fast. Wrong. Wrong. I put myself in a fucking situation. I look back on that shit now, I was like, bro, why the fuck I even do that? I don't regret my son. Obviously, I don't. It was the best thing that's ever happened in my life. But, you know, in terms of being in that situation, my nigga. Crazy. But, you know, I, uh, the thing that hurt me the most is, you know, my son's not going to be able to witness us under the same household. You know what I mean? But, I'm currently fighting to, you know, have an equal amount of rights to my son physically and, you know, legally. You know what I mean? That's going to be a long battle. You feel what I mean? Shit. Now, the way these courts be designed, the way these courts be set up, man, it's like, it's almost like, I'm not going to say impossible, but it's very difficult for uh, the man to get his, you know, fair shake. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, I don't really talk about it on here too much, but, uh, you know, niggas be having real life shit going on outside of here, but, you know, I stay coming on here talking to y'all because y'all my people, you feel what I mean? But we gonna fight this shit out. But then when they see you with a lawyer, then they like, oh, okay, this nigga, this nigga serious. I mean. I'll tell you what though, the last uh hearing I went to, what was it? The last the first hearing I had went to for custody. I ain't gonna say too much. I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start putting that shit on the new channel whenever this situation subsides. But it was crazy because we were separated, right? Two sections. All the moms is on this side and all the dads is on this side. I can't help but notice that there was like lawyers that was just like sitting around, sitting around that, that, that waiting room. And they were strictly talking to the women, bro. Strictly talking to the women. You know what I mean? Because they, I don't know, these lawyers be under the assumption that these women be the plaintiffs. It's like, nah, bro. 
I'm the plaintiff. She's the defendant. You see what I mean? I'm the one that's fighting my fucking ass off to try to be the father that I want to be right now. I'm being limited. I'm being marginalized. You feel what I mean? So I, I, it'd be crazy. It's like the, the system just automatically assumes that the women are the victims in this situation. Are they the ones who being dead wrong? You know what I mean? And that shit don't be the case at all. You feel me? But we gonna take care of that shit. You know what I mean? That shit coming up in September. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to all the single fathers out there that gotta deal with this shit, bro. It's heartbreaking. But I'm built. I done, I done seen it all. I done been through it all, bro. I look at this shit as a light bump. Light bump in the road. You know what I mean? So let's get this shit popping. You know what I mean? Hopefully, hopefully this shit all is done with, goes away. By the time my son is, you know, you know, understanding the world that's around him and he starts asking questions, hopefully that's all. You know what I mean? Done by them. You feel me? But that's a little bit too much of the personal shit, man. I'm going to try to leave that shit alone and just keep it boxing. I appreciate it. But I guess y'all tuned in, though, because, you know, there's still a lot of people in here. So it is what it is, man. Um, Technically, that's true, Zay. But, you know, she is, I mean, some shit has been done. You know what I mean? Some snake shit had been done. I can't really speak on it but because uh, of legal reasons. But she had found a way to, you know, finesse that. You know what I mean? I ain't tripping, though, because, ain't bro, I do everything for my son. Everything. I pay for everything. I mean, this nigga is well taken care of. This nigga got life insurance, bank account. <laughs> like, there's nothing that that young boy don't got right now. Got the best toys, <laughs> nice clothes, nice little, uh, they call them booties and shit, because they're not sneakers technically. But uh, yeah, bro, he got the best baby food, all that. My crib is pretty much tailored around this little nigga, man. And um, it's going to continue being like that. You know what I mean? And I'm going to show them, like, this ain't just no, this ain't no part-time dad y'all talking to. You feel me? So this is what it is, bro. I ain't tripping. My son going to know what it is. Yeah, I got all my receipts, bro. I got receipts from DoorDash, fucking uh, GoPuff, um, receipts from Save-A-Lot, Target, oh, bro, everything. Everything email receipts from clothes. I got the I got his bank account information, bro. It's uh, listen, I'm well prepared. You know what I'm saying? I'm the main, I'm the main provider. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they can't tell me nothing. He got his own room, he's not even old enough to be in his own room yet. Like, come on, man. I got this, I got this crib for me and him. That room is his. <laughs> How many kids you know that's 10 months old, they got their own room to themselves? Come on now. But uh, you know what, man? I appreciate everybody that came on here. This is a pretty good live, man. We had our funny moments. I mean, we talked boxing. We got into a little bit of personal talk and shit like that. And I appreciate everybody that's coming on here and giving me encouraging words because, you know, I never really spoke about this publicly. But, yeah, this is definitely a war going on. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Um, I'm prepared for whatever situation comes my way. And we going to adjust accordingly until, you know, we do what we need to do. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep being who I am. And I appreciate everybody that's come on to support me, man. But I'm going to get up out of here. I've been on here for two hours almost two and a half hours. So I appreciate everybody that's tuned in the entire time, man. But I'm going to get up out of here. I got to get ready for work in the morning. 
know what I mean, to end my weekend. So uh, shout out to everybody that's in the building, man. This is Zuma TV. Thank you very much for tuning in. Y'all have a beautiful night, man. Um, I'll be back with the videos and another live tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. But until then, I holler at y'all, man. Y'all have a blessed, beautiful night. Peace.